to Baiju's exam prep. How are you all? I hope you all are doing fine. And I welcome you on this Civil Mechanical and Exe YouTube channel of uh, Baiju's exam prep. Kindly please let me know if I'm perfectly audible and visible to all of you. And then we will start this session where I am going to cover the entire highway engineering. And I'll be talking about not just uh, the important concept, but each and every concept I am going to touch today, right? And not just touch, I'm going to make sure that you know the concepts. So if any of you get any of the doubt in the middle of the session, make sure you are asking me because I am ready to tell you each and every question that you are going to ask to me today. Right. So uh, can you please uh, share this session with your friends so that uh, more people can join and I can start the session afterwards. Uh, OK, who are here with me? I have Anwar. Hi, good morning. Can you please share the session? OK. All right, guys, make sure you are hitting the like button and uh, sharing the session before we start. So uh, I think uh, some of you might uh, not be aware of me who I am. So what I'll do is I'll quickly introduce myself to those who are watching me for the first time. So um, my name is Joshit Singh. If you don't know me, my name is Joshit Singh. And I have uh, I think this is five plus years of teaching experience. I'm MTech from IIT Rurki. These are my achievements. These are my area of expertise. Before I begin, let me tell you about the scholarship test, which is going to be conducted on 21st of Jan. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Whereas uh, we have another workshop for you at 7.30 p.m. on 24th Jan. Do not uh, uh, miss this workshop. It is going to be a free workshop. You can surely register yourself. Okay. So I have with me Arvind, Rakshita. I have relaxing and meditating music with me. Sogat, Sogat and BTEC I am my. Okay. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So let's let's uh, let's talk about the marathon series. I hope you now know each and everything about the series. Like uh, you are done with everything. Like only one subject is left, which is RCC and marathon. RCC marathon, right? And apart from that, you can see you are also having the classes for maths and also the aptitude. Okay, so these are the four things which I am going to cover today. These are the four chapters which I will be considering. So I have geometric design of highway, traffic engineering, highway material, pavement design. These are all the topics, all the chapters that I am going to talk about. And I will talk about every single topic. Okay, sir. All right. So uh, can you please share the session? I hope uh, we touch 50 plus. I think then I can start with this. Uh, is there anyone who knows me already? Because I have uh, been far from gate. Uh, so YouTube channel, I think uh, more than for more than three months, four months, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right. Okay. Aditya, hi, Prince. Structure hoga, sir. Yo, jo hoga, sir, yehi hai. I mean, this is the everything which I have showed you. This is everything that we are going to cover. Simple. And rest, I will tell you if you uh, need it. So we'll arrange it somehow. Okay. Uh, I think we all are ready now, right? Uh, let's take and uh, let's start. Doesn't matter how many people are here. Okay, sir. So the first chapter is going to be design, uh, geometric design of highway, where uh, I will talk about a lot of concepts like friction. I'll talk about the uh, SSD, OSD, ISD, everything related to side distance. I'll talk about horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment. Everything I'm going to cover in today's session is in this particular in this particular chapter, then we have new chapter, we'll talk new things. So let's start with the first thing in geometric design. What we are going to talk about is uh, the cross section elements. We will talk about the side distance considerations. We will talk about horizontal alignment and along with that, the vertical details will also be discussed. Here we have uh, highway cross section elements where one of the most important thing is friction. So let's talk about friction first. As you all know, without friction, it is not possible for any vehicle or anything to move or to go from point A to point B if friction is not available between object and the surface. Right, sir? So whenever this friction comes, there is a obvious question which is being asked by uh, every faculty, I would say. And that question is that suppose if I have a vehicle like this and this vehicle is moving in this direction let's say it is moving from left to right let me tell you what is left what is right 
इट इज मूविंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन my question to you is at this time when the vehicle is in moving 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 condition moving scenario okay it is not stopping or anything it is moving so when it is moving then what is going to be the direction of frictional force what is the direction of frictional force that is what i want to ask to you option a it is along the direction of motion option b it is against the direction of motion a or b please quickly let me know All right, we have Abhinav sir also in the comment box. Cool sir, come on everybody, you have to answer this. If you have seen my session um, at least once, any time, then you know the answer of this question very easily. You can tell the answer. So uh, when the vehicle is moving in this direction, so the frictional force that will be generated have the direction in this direction, forward or backward. I mean, uh, opposite to the direction of the vehicle. What is the direction? All right, very well. So, guys, please understand that when the vehicle is moving, yes, the vehicle is going in this direction, but the vehicle is not in contact with the vehicle's body is not in contact with the surface. Who is in contact with the surface? The tires are there in contact with the surface. And what is the movement of tire if the vehicle has to go in this direction? I can say the vehicle's tire should move in this direction. Yes or no? Which is clockwise, right? So when you see this point and if you notice what is uh, happening here, the velocity component in this direction you are seeing, right? So if the tire is going in this direction, just to make sure that the vehicle is going in the forward direction, then what is going to be the direction of friction force? I would say just opposite to this and along the direction of motion. So it's, that is why option A was right. And uh, this is the condition only valid when the vehicle is moving. If the vehicle will be stopping or applying the brake, the opposite will start to happen because then only the vehicle will stop itself. I hope I'm clear with the explanation and the concept. You can please send me a hard sign to confirm that you got this. And if you have a doubt, you can kindly ask and then we'll move ahead. Very well. So let's move ahead. Let's see what we have next. So next is uh, something which uh, generally makes student uh, very confused related to slip and skid. How many of you are uh, confused between slip and skid when it is asked in exam maybe or maybe in general? Come on, tell me how many of you are actually, you know, uh, confused between this. What is slip? What is skid? Something like that. Tell me quick, everyone. All right. <clears throat> come on, genuinely tell me. Come on. Aisa kya, aata sharma kya ro yar. Koi answer. All right, sir. So, so uh, if I just talk about a normal condition, no slip, no skid, nothing, just a normal vehicle. So what happened is, let's say if the vehicle's tire is having the diameter as D, right, sir? Let's say that in one rotation, this tire reached from here to here. So what is going to be this distance, everybody? This longitudinal distance will be what? Quickly answer. In one rotation, the tire went from here to here. What is the longitudinal distance that it has covered? So it has covered the distance equal to the circumference of the tire. Right, sir? So longitudinal distance should be equals to circumferential dia uh, distance, sorry. So longitudinal distance equals the circumferential distance very well now what happened in slip in slip actually what happened the tire after one rotation reaches up to a distance which is actually less than the circumferential distance so what actually happened vehicles tire was rotating but not moving the vehicle was not moving in the forward direction so this is what slip look like. This can happen in mud when the vehicle is stuck to a muddy road or maybe when uh, you are in snow that time also you can see this type of issue. Then what is a skid? In the skid opposite of this happen even after application of the brake in one rotation the distance covered by the tire which is the longitudinal distance it is more then the circumferential distance so basically what happened here is that even after the vehicle's tire was stopped 
then also the vehicle was moving in the direction of motion and then this type of skid marks can be seen on the road got it moving on now skid resistance what are the factors on which skid resistance depends so this can be easily asked in the statement question so that is why it is very important when i say skid resistance we are basically talking about the friction which is going to be developed between the tire and the road surface right so that's what i'm going to talk about number one the condition of pavement wet or dry now understand everybody that old tire old tire works better when the road is dry and uh, the new tire, the new tire, they work when the road is wet because they come, uh, they are actually having treads which help them to make a better grip in comparison to old tire. So remember this, only if someone asks you that road is uh, wet or dry, tell the friction value will be more or less, that time you can't say anything because you need to know about the condition of the tire. If you are aware of the condition of the tire, then only you can let uh, the people know that, okay, whether the friction will be less or more. Next, if suppose the road is smooth, then also friction development will be less. Rough friction development will be more. If there is the oil spilled or dry sand on the pavement, then also the friction that has to be developed will not develop. And I can say the skid resistance will be less. This we have already talked about new tire, old tire. Speed of the vehicle, obviously it is uh, proportional, right? I mean, not proportional, but it is uh, depending upon, I mean, the skirt resistance depend on the velocity. If some vehicle is moving with a higher velocity, obviously at that particular, for that particular vehicle, what is going to happen? The vehicle will be generating less friction, right? That is the reason why if your velocity is too much, you can't stop your vehicle even after applying the entire brake. But if your velocity is less, then surely you can try to uh, apply the brake and your vehicle will stop. Then extent of brake application or brake efficiency. So how much brake you have applied? If you will apply just 50% of the brake, then definitely the friction development will be less. And efficiency. If your brakes, even after... Uh, pressing the brake 100% but the brakes are not good efficient uh, are not efficient enough then what is going to happen then in that case again there will be less friction developed load and tire pressure so if there will be a very heavy load on the vehicle or you can say the vehicle is very heavy then friction will be more with the surface and if I talk about the tire pressure so tire pressure you can think about the childhood memories when you used to uh, have a flat tire in your bicycle, right? So it used to uh, move very, very difficult. You, it, it used to be very difficult for you to ride the bicycle. But once you are uh, increasing or once you are having the air in the tire, then the bicycle feels like aeroplane. I mean, it starts flying. Okay. Or now also you can see if your bike is uh, puncture, then you can imagine how difficult it is to pull your bike from your house to the puncture wala. Correct? So if the tire pressure will be more, less friction will be there between the vehicle and the road. And if the tire pressure will be less, in that case, the friction will be more and vice versa. So that's it, I think. Uh, is it clear? Whatever I said, I just need you guys to be uh, more engaging with me in the session, okay? So kindly please let me know if uh, whatever I have just told you is clear to all of you or not. Are you enjoying? Or not? I hope you are. Okay. Now the next thing. Uh, according to IRC, uh, we have uh, specified values of longitudinal friction and lateral friction. Now, when the lateral friction and longitudinal friction comes into the picture, let's understand that. Suppose a vehicle is moving in this direction and basically it is moving uh, in longitudinal direction, right? So, the frictional force that you are going to see, can I say it is only here? Can I say there will be no component of this particular? Can I say there is no component of this particular force exist in this condition? If I say it, can you agree with me or not? Are you are you saying that okay? Yes, sir. Because uh, 
you, you see any there will be no component right there will be no other component it is just moving in the straight direction right sir so this particular uh frictional force component which is along the direction of the motion this is technically called as the longitudinal frictional force and the coefficient of friction is known as longitudinal uh, coefficient of friction as it is mentioned here longitudinal friction coefficient and the value which IRC has suggested to us Indian Road Congress it is 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 now my question again to all of you is when I say 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 so obviously this range is there because of the velocities right because a vehicle can move in range there is a huge range of velocities in which the vehicle can move that is why we have a range over here now quickly tell me everyone uh, higher the velocity is going to be higher will be the value of coefficient of longitudinal friction true or false higher the velocity higher is the value of coefficient of friction True or false? Quickly answer. Higher the velocity, higher will be the value of longitudinal of coefficient friction. Coefficient of friction, coefficient friction, friction coefficient. That is the question to you. True or false? Yes, obviously it is false. See, this 0.35 is there if the velocity is more than 70 kmph. Not saying just by myself, it is by being given by Indian Road Congress, right? And if the velocity is uh, less than 30 kmph, then 0.4 will be the coefficient of friction, right? So this is how it works. Now suppose there is a curve something like this and now the vehicle is turning. So in this case what is going to happen is that there will be a centrifugal force which is trying to uh, throw the vehicle outside, throw the vehicle to the outer side of the curve, right? But against this, against this the vehicle is going to generate a frictional force and that force has to be just opposite to it and now the force which is in the lateral direction, the frictional force which is in the lateral direction of the movement of the vehicle is called as lateral frictional force. And the coefficient that we use here is called as lateral friction coefficient. And for this, the value is given to us as 0.15. So 0.15 is the value for uh, coefficient, uh, lateral friction coefficient and 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 for longitudinal friction coefficient value i hope till now everything is fine and nobody have any doubt if you have you can kindly ask the next thing is pavement unevenness and uh, here what we are going to find out is unevenness index so first i'll tell you how it works practically on field so that you have a good picture about why we are studying it so actually what happened is as you all know that nhei is not the one who is constructing the highways NHEI basically gives the tender to some private company and they are the one who are making the highways, correct? Suppose NHEI has given the uh, tender to XYZ company. Now that XYZ company called the NHEI officials that okay, we are done with the highways, you can come for the inspection, right? This is not how it works. Actually, NHEI people go often. Anyways, so let's say that uh, NHI uh, people will reach over there. So what they are going to do is they are going to conduct a different different test. I will talk about more test when we will go to highway material again. But for now you just understand about the unevenness. So now they also going to check they are also going to check the unevenness index. Now for unevenness index to check the unevenness index they will use this bump integrator. This is as you can see mentioned over here also on duty NHAI, right? So this is the NHAI vehicle and with the NHAI vehicle, you can see something is, uh, you know, uh, here you can see there is something which is attached. This is basically nothing but this is your uh, bump integrator, one of the bump integrator, right? Now what actually it is calculating? So let's uh, talk about that. So let's say, let's consider a one kilometer length of a road. So let's say this is the one kilometer length of the road, right? Now you can not see any uh, anything uh, rough over here or any vertical undulations can't be seen. 
So what I'll do is I'll just magnify this and now when we magnify this is how it looks. Something like this right so let's say this is one kilometer and now let's say that this uh, vertical undulation is uh, 2 mm this vertical undulation is again 2 mm this uh, height is again 2 mm this is let's say 1.5 let's say this one is 0.5 mm so uh can i say here we have 8 8 mm of vertical duration uh undulation so cumulative measure will be what it will be 8 mm per kilometer this is your unevenness index for this particular example that i have considered now Let's say, okay, you have find out, you have found out the value of unevenness index with the help of bump integrator, which is being given by CRRI, Central Road Research Institute. Now, what, uh, what, uh, or how we can decide whether this is okay or not. So, for that, the MORTH has also given us the table to decide whether it is good or not. So, if value of unevenness is less than 1500 mm per kilometer, in that case, you can call the pavement as good. If 1500 to 2500 mm per kilometer, you can call this as satisfactory. 2500 to 3500 bad and 3500 mm to, uh, I mean, just greater than 3500 is bribe. I mean, uncomfortable. Sorry. Okay, sir. So this is how uh, the pavement unevenness works. Any doubts, anyone? Please ask. If not, send a hard sign. everybody clear whatever i have just told you all right moving on okay what we have next okay next is cross slope or camber so cross slope or camber why we do that and what is it firstly what is it so as you can see here this road is not flat there is a curve here okay there is a curve here and the reason is very simple and can be easily seen that if there is a rainfall happening if there is a rainfall happening i don't want the water to accumulate on the road suppose if i have a flat road what will happen the water will start accumulating here because what you have here is footpath right but if you are going to make a curve here in the cross section what will happen now the water will flow in this direction where you have already provided the drains right so that is why we provide camber to basically drain off the rainwater from the road surface right so now the rate of camber or cross slope is usually designated as one in n now this one in n is not a rocket science basically what we are doing we are basically telling this particular like what is the angle over here right what is the angle so slope we are measuring right so what we are doing is we are measuring the slope so when we are measuring the slope it can be represented is uh, as one in n it can be represented in percentage also so it is okay there is no problem with that now is there anyone who have doubt in one in n what actually is one in n anyone have doubt you can please let me know i'll quickly take one minute and explain in case anyone have the doubt because it has nothing to do with the highway engineering it is just general knowledge but uh, somehow general knowledge is not that general nowadays uh, there will be mostly, I mean, the questions will be there, but not designated questions. The questions will be when I'm explaining you something, then only I'll be asking. Okay, everybody knows about 1NN. Superb, amazing. Moving on. Now, we have a different type of camber based on our requirements, as per our requirements, as per our need. So, suppose if you are having, uh, you know, 
a pavement where you have a slow moving traffic then what you can do is you can simply have a straight line camber now straight line camber is very simple all you have to do is you have to designate the camber in the triangular shape right sir in the triangular shape that's what you have to do it's very simple to make right there will be no problem now the thing is uh, what question they can ask you the question they can ask you is what is the height of crown of this particular of this particular cross section which is having a straight line camber so this what this is what they are trying to ask y max now this is a triangle right so we don't need any uh, any equation to be known already or anything triangle is i think one of the most basic thing now if you talk about this uh, angle here let's say this and just talk about this triangle a b c right you can easily tell me what is 10 theta here everybody what is 10 theta? 10 theta is perpendicular upon base. Correct, sir? I am trying to do something for uh, because of which you don't have to mug up things. You just understand and apply in the exam. Okay. Perpendicular upon base. Here, what is the perpendicular? Can I say Y max? Yes, sir. And what is B? Can I say W by 2? Yes, sir. And what is 10 theta? 10 theta is the slope. And how do we designate slope in our case? We are designating it in terms of 1 in n. Now from here, what you get for y max is very simple. And it is w by 2n. Simple sorted, easy to remember as well. Any doubts to anybody? You can kindly ask. Okay. So this is the uh, maximum or you can say height of crown. If somehow they ask you in the examination, don't mug up. You can easily find the value. Right. Now, if suppose you are having a pavement, uh, which is, you know, supposed to be having a fast moving vehicle on it. Then you go for the parabolic camber. For parabolic camber, again, the same question may arise that, okay, come on. You know how, what is the maximum uh, height of summit or the height of summit in straight line. Now, what is going to be the height of summit in parabolic? See. If the slope is same, doesn't matter what shape you are using, this or that, because the height will remain same, right? See, if you notice, I have actually overlapped the triangular or straight line camber here also. So there are three points which are common, three points which are common in parabolic camber as well as in the straight line camber which is the starting point the end point and the summit point so that is why this is very simple that y max for parabolic also is going to be w by 2n but if you want to find out then you can use the parabolic equation which is 2x square by nw 2x square by like this and you know the x is starting from here so for uh, x equals to w by 2 what you will get w by 2n so that's the same thing only like i just told you here it's the same thing okay sir so do the do this way or that way it's okay now, if suppose you are uh, sure that you, you cannot decide whether it is a, you know, slow moving traffic road or a fast moving traffic road in those scenarios or, or I can say practical scenarios, we go for the combination of both straight and parabolic shape. We don't choose one. We go for both. So here what is happening? The edges are straight, but the center is going to be parabolic. It makes sure there is no problem for fast moving also and slow moving as well. Now, uh, recommended value of camber as per Indian Road Congress, again, I have for you important values they are. Why they are important? Because sometimes they will ask you the height of summit and they will not tell you what is the, um, what is the N value, what is the slope value, what they will tell you, the condition. They will tell you 
that you are having a high type uh, bituminous surface low rainfall condition now you have to know that the value of n is what one i mean the value of uh, slope is what in that case it is 1.7 percent so that is should be that should be known so i have mentioned all of them cement concrete and high type bituminous surface is suppose this road is being built in a heavy rainfall areas then you have to provide the value of camber rate of camber as two percent if same road is being built in low rainfall areas then you can choose 1.7 percent also thin bituminous surface goes from 2.5 to 2 water bound macadam and gravel goes from 3 to 22.5 and earthen goes for 4 to 3 percent depending upon heavy rainfall or low rainfall right okay now the next thing is suppose if you have like okay you what you did is you have provided this uh, kind of a slope in the pavement now the thing is on the side of your pavement you also have a component called as shoulder now if somehow you don't know what is shoulder you can see in this picture so this is shoulder the space that you leave along the road so that if anyone have to stop in emergency in any case of emergency if any vehicle have to stop it is going to stop here okay it is it has to stop here only now the thing is because i have the shoulder and as you can see it is unpaved it is unpaved so what is going to happen the the water is going to flow or you can say or you can say the rainfall water will come and start accumulating here since there is no slope right and this is unpaved so it is very likely that the water is going to seep inside and reach to the foundation which is the subgrade layer of the pavement and will provide the local deformations or local settlement which can be easily seen on the top surface also just in case of flexible pavements right so how to avoid this problem i'll tell you to avoid this problem what we can do is we can provide a cross slope or shoulder as well how much we will provide 0.5 percent steeper steeper cross slope than the cross slope of adjoining pavement now what does that mean that basically means that if you are providing the camber rate of camber as two percent so the shoulder along this road will be having the slope of 2.5 percent all right it will have 0.5 percent more camber uh, more slope than the rate of camber so this is what uh, this is how we are going to make sure there is no accumulation of water on the unpaved shoulders is it clear everybody if clear please send me a heart sign if there is a doubt you can ask for the doubt i will do this after every few topics so that i know that you are not sleeping in your blankets how many of you are there in the blankets tell me genuinely if i were you i would have been in a blanket for sure <clears throat> tell me quick 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 everybody That is possible please increase speed okay let's do one thing let's do a quick vote uh if we get the majority of increasing the speed i will increase the speed if we don't then i will not so uh, how many of you want uh, me to increase the speed just say yes if you want just say no if you want that i maintain the same speed remember now the topics are easy but difficult topics will also come so answer accordingly just uh, say one time okay i think the best comment i got is from arvind he has said something sensible 
that increase the speed for now and uh, then pavement and traffic will less sure done so what i'll do for this theory part i'll increase the speed and for the explanation part i'll slow down okay i think that will work okay perfect so let's continue now the next thing that i'm going to talk about is uh what yeah width of the pavement now this is very evident and i think you i have nothing to discuss over here i just show you that single lane road is having the width of carriage way is 3.75 carriage way is the part of the road on which the vehicle can move so 3.75 for single lane road two lane without race curve it is seven meter two lane with race curve it goes 7.5 intermediate carriage way which is greater than one lane and smaller than uh, the two lane road goes for 5.5 and suppose you have two or more lanes then the width has to be then the width has to be 3.5 per lane so suppose if there are uh, how many four lanes so the width of the road is going to be how much 14 meter moving on carriage way as you can see this is the carriage way okay next is median now this is very interesting topic and very easy as well now the thing is that uh, median is nothing but it is called as divider also in general language and technically it is called as median or traffic separator now it has one job to avoid the head-on collision head-on collision is when the vehicle are going to strike each other or uh, collide with each other from head to head bonnet to bonnet that is head-on collision so if I can somehow provide a median in between then the vehicle going here and the vehicle going here are going to be separated and we can avoid this type of collision now let's go in uh, more technicality it is desirable to provide wide median of 8 to 14 meter now this is a too much like very uh, desirable or ideal condition we are saying that in ideal condition the median width should be 8 to 14 meter right we just don't uh, provide this uh, very often right next is minimum six meter is required to reduce headlight glare now you also nowadays or maybe when you travel at night you may also experience that when the vehicle is coming from the forward direction from the opposite direction and the headlight is on high beam you get a glare in your eyes and you are not able to see what is there in front of you correct this must have happened with everybody now to remove that particular part just to avoid that type of glare minimum width of the median should be six meter i am talking about only and only for this condition to be satisfied how to avoid the glare you have to provide a median which is going to be of six meter so six meter is specified only for this condition remember this next irc recommends the minimum desirable width of five meter for median of rural highways which may be reduced to three meter where land is restricted you cannot get more land you cannot get right of way more than required then in that case you can restrict the value of the median to three meter but desirable value is going to be five meter if not possible then only three meter you have to choose moving on now what is the right of way now imagine you have to construct a road and let's say the road is going to be of 14 meter so that land that you are going to acquire let's say this is the land that you have acquired and it is of 14 meter very well that's what you have intended for now what is going to happen is once the road is completed the people will start opening the shops and the uh what is that zuba kesari and all right so these shops are going to be here right now the thing is when we want to expand the road or we want to increase the lane in future now what will happen either i have to dis uh, destroy all these shops and pay them the compensation because i am destroying their shops so to avoid such condition what we are going to do is instead of acquiring 14 meter we will acquire more more land than the required maybe 20 meter maybe more than this also right as you can see 150 meter also now the reason is very simple so that i can make sure in future if i want to expand or if i want to increase the lane then i am not going to pay anything extra to anyone now here there are two things that you need to know or three things you need to know is that is a boundary line building line and control line now beyond boundary line and before building line in this area in this particular land you can have anyone can have a temporary amount of agriculture i mean temporary agriculture you can do permanently you can't between building line to control line you can do agriculture but also you can have temporary construction also construction should not have 
द फाउंडेशन द कंस्ट्रक्शन कैन बी अ वेयर हाउस समथिंग लाइक दैट राइट दैट यू कैन हैव देन बियॉन्ड कंट्रोल लाइन डू वट एवर यू वॉन्ट ठीक है जो करना है करो बियॉन्ड कंट्रोल लाइन यू कैन डू एनीथिंग यू वॉट यू वॉन्ट नेक्स्ट नाउ कम्स टू द एस एस डी और साइड डिस्टेंस इन साइड डिस्टेंस आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एस एस डी आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट आई एस डी आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ओ एस डी आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एच एस डी आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरसेक्शन साइड डिस्टेंस सो दीज फाइव थिंग्स इफ आई मिस एनी वन ऑफ देम प्लीज रिमाइंड मी ओके नाउ एंड बाई द वे दीज वैल्यूज आर फॉर स्टेट हाईवे एंड नेशनल हाईवे सो डोंट वरी अबाउट द वैल्यूज फ्रॉम वेयर दे आर कमिंग एंड द कंस्ट्रक्शन वैल्यूज आर सेम और सिमिलर for national highway and state highway why because in national highway act any any state highway can be converted to national highway at any point of time that is the reason why the construction remain same for both the kind of roads moving on okay <clears throat> now stopping side distance let's let's talk about stopping side distance uh, first of all we need to understand why we require stopping side distance and uh, what actually is it so if i talk about what part it is very simple to understand stopping site distance distance you know what is distance site what you can see and stopping so basically we are saying how much distance at any point of time should be visible to you so that if you want to stop your vehicle you can stop without any problem how much distance should be visible to you or should be in your sight to make sure that you can stop your vehicle safely now i'll give you a quick example of my society so this is the uh, one of the part of my society where the road is something like this here we have a small uh, what we call it kya yaar canal canal kind of thing right here we have a canal here buildings and everything here we have boundary very high boundary and here we have a shops so let's say this car uh, is is taking a haircut i mean not the car but the owner is taking the haircut here there is a shop where uh, there is a salon now this vehicle is coming and moving in this direction this car is parked over here obviously this is right now stop red car is stop white car is moving now guys let's say the distance between them right now is uh, for example let's say 100 meter all right the distance between them is 100 meter now the thing is the speed with which my white car is moving if it applies the brake at that distance at that speed sorry then let's say it will need somewhere around 70 meters to stop completely now quickly tell me can white car avoid the collision with the red car at this condition can the white car avoid the collision with the red car 100 meter is the distance which is available between these two car and this car if applies the brake need 70 meter to stop itself don't use your brain just give answer brainless humble request yes it will avoid the problem avoid the collision there will be no collision right sir so here we are talking about the stopping distance right sir this is a stopping distance stopping distance for this car is 70 meter but now the question is how this white car knows that there is a red car parked can it see can it see let's say driver is here can the driver see the car there is a boundary vehicle is not visible the white car guy cannot see the red car parked over there because we have a boundary here this black color is a boundary of a building now what will happen when this red white car will reach here can i say now now the driver can see that there is a vehicle standing but but now this white car is it having 70 meter available to stop i don't think so so what will happen it will come ahead and they will collide that is why sight is very important not just the stopping distance did you get this why is stopping sight distance important
डे बिफोर येस्टरडे डे बिफोर येस्टरडे मिस्टर नितिन गडकरी सो ही हैज गिवन द स्टेटमेंट दैट एक्सीडेंट्स आर नॉट हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द ड्राइवर्स एक्सीडेंट्स आर हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द इंजीनियर्स डू यू नो दिस दिस स्टेटमेंट आई मीन he gave this i think day before yesterday only if you see the news so this is what he was trying to tell you that bad engineering is the cause of accident padha karo news thoda bahut okay now let's uh, calculate how to i mean let's see how to calculate stopping side distance i'll just slow down quite because here we have explanation so let's say this vehicle is moving in this direction when my vehicle reaches to this direction uh, this particular distance or this particular point it notices that there is something on the road not sure what not sure what okay but this vehicle saw something is on the road now the driver is not sure what is it the driver is not sure whether to apply the brake or not so in that dilemma the driver covered this much distance from here to here the driver covered the distance and the driver was thinking should i apply the brake okay should i apply the brake at this particular point this driver actually applied the brake now if you have drive uh, uh, like uh, drove any car or any 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 vehicle you know that as soon as you apply the brake vehicle don't stop they take some distance to stop correct so this vehicle after application of brake covered this much distance more now here the vehicle applied the brake here the vehicle come in a rest position so this is after applying the brake now the distance that vehicle has covered from the point where it saw the object for the first time till it come at rest this entire distance is called as stopping side distance ssd okay sir the distance for which the driver was thinking or making the decision which is from here to here it is called as lag distance the distance the vehicle covered after application of brake till it come at rest is called as brake distance so i hope it is very much evident from here that ssd is nothing but it is lag distance plus break distance is it clear to everybody or you have a doubt please ask if it is clear then i'll move ahead with the uh, uh, that what we call it the numerical part mathematical part quickly answer Sir, which one is greater? You will get your answer just after this. Okay. Now, so uh, lag plus brake, right? Now let's say the vehicle uh, or the driver, you know, took uh, TR time to decide whether to apply the brake or not. Or TR time is basically the reaction time, and the vehicle was moving with velocity v. With velocity v, so the distance it will cover in the TR time will be how much v into TR. Now here v. Now remember everyone, if you are watching me for the first time teaching highway engineering, so let me be very clear with one thing. In highway engineering, there is a lot of time we have velocity in meter per second. Lot of time velocity is in kilometer per hour. So you may get confused. I will uh, remove that confusion forever. in the entire session whenever i will write v like this that means i am writing in meter per second when i write v like this it means i am writing in kilometer per hour 
okay hardly like hard not hardly like zero percent error i have made in this uh denotion like from last four or five years so please remember this so here sec uh, this is in seconds right reaction time is in seconds so definitely it is going to be v times of tr this is very simple you have got the lag distance moving on to the break distance okay yeah very important information if lag distance uh, in lag distance if reaction time is not given you can consider 25 2.5 seconds now uh, how we are deciding 2.5 actually we are not deciding irc has decided and irc has decided on the basis of what on the basis of p i e v theory now here p stands for perception i stands for intellection e stands for emotion and v stands for volition now when your i for the first time sees anything now i don't have a brain okay it cannot think what it will do it will just send the perception to the brain so from i the perception goes to brain in brain intellection take place like whatever you have seen uh, what is it like uh, from your past history it will try to find out what is this object once you are confirmed that okay it is a cow or it is a dog or it is a cat or something else then you will say that okay uh now emotions will come right whether you know uh, if i won't stop the car this animal might get hurt right or uh, this uh, man can get hurt or maybe if you are salman khan you won't get uh, anyways uh, anyways uh, that was not salman khan it, that was the driver i'll be very sure about it so please don't uh, okay emotion and then obviously you are not uh, scarlet johansson from movie lucy where you just think and things are going to happen right you have to do an action so for stopping the vehicle you will send the signal from your brain to your legs that is called as volition so this entire process of here to here takes 2.5 seconds and it is called as piev theory this is being explained by indian road congress moving on next is stopping side distance <clears throat> just a minute Hmm. now next thing uh, next thing is break distance now in break distance please understand there are few things that you should know in break distance what is happening you have applied the brake here and the vehicle stopped here right sir now if i want to find out the kinetic energy here can i say it is half mv square what is the kinetic energy here kinetic energy at second section Come on, quick answer you have to give. Then only I can say that okay, you will learn something today. Good, zero because velocity is zero. So the change in energy happened how much? Half mv square, and we know that it has to be equals to what? It has to be equals to what? Work done. Work done is what? Force into displacement. Force is what? force is uh, the friction force basically so f into w coefficient of longitudinal friction weight and displacement is how much the break distance so into l so half mv square f w can be written as m into g into l from here as you can see what you will get is break distance is equals to v square by 2gf okay sir now suppose if the break efficiency also i have to consider out of v g f l who is going to be affected with that break efficiency who is going to be affected by that break efficiency out of v g f l obviously f I have already discussed this in the class initially, right? So if brake efficiency is also given, you can write D here. Okay, sir. So finally, you can say that, finally, you can say that SSD is equals to, I will write in my own handwriting, 
v times t r v square by 2 g f if break efficiency given then take b also here if break efficiency not given then take b as one only okay there is no problem so this is ssd now the thing is <clears throat> in the examination 99 percent time they will not give you the value of velocity in meter per second right they will give you the velocity in kilometer per hour so in such cases how to deal with it so i think you all know how to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour or kilometer per hour to meter per second so i don't have to you know get into it so i'll tell you if you write this in terms of kilometer per hour then ssd is equals to 0.278 vtr v square <coughs> 254f if brake efficiency given take b also here velocity is in kilometer per hour here velocity is in meter per second remember now this is the case when there is no slope given to us if suppose the slope is also there on the road then what we are going to do so if the slope is given in that case the slope is also going to be considered now uh, i think uh, you know this and if you don't know this i'll tell you the lag distance it has nothing to do with the brake distance. I mean, the lag distance has nothing to do with the slope. Okay, because velocity is there, reaction time is there. There is no change in velocity as well. There is no change in the reaction time as well. So it is unaffected with the slope. But brake distance, since it is having a, a force considered here, force you have considered kiya hai. So that is why the brake distance is going to be affected. So I'll tell you how it looks like. We are not going for derivation. I'll quickly tell you the uh, summary only. <clears throat> so SSD will be 0.278 V into TR. No change in the lag distance. V square. 254 FB plus minus N% by 100. If the vehicle is moving in up gradient, then plus. If the vehicle moving in down gradient, then minus. Okay, just for your knowledge, I'll mention this in meter per second also. That's it. SSD will come in meter, right? Yes, sir. Now, any doubt anyone, please ask. If not, write cc in the comment box or send a hard sign now the next thing is uh, ssd values as per the different condition of the road if one lane one way is there you will require SSD. Two lane one way SSD. Two lane two way SSD. But one lane two way if you are having, then you need two SSD or SSD one plus SSD two. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. So if suppose there is a one lane only and it is two way, means vehicle is going from here to here and the vehicle is moving from here to here. Right? This vehicle is, let's say vehicle one, this vehicle is vehicle two. Now suppose if the distance between these vehicle is 500 meter and the distance required by vehicle 1 to stop is let's say uh, 250 meter for example, right? So when this vehicle reaches here, uh, obviously it has seen the vehicle and it will start, your st uh, start its stopping operation. Let's say the vehicle reach here, vehicle 1, right? And let's say it is 200 meter distance. Uh, it will just need 50 meter more, right? 50 meter more. So it can easily stop, I mean, right? But there is a problem. What is the problem? This vehicle 
this vehicle is uh, not here now because the vehicle is also moving so this vehicle will be somewhere here so now the distance between them is not enough to stop themselves so that is the reason what what we are going to do is we will be taking not just ssd but the required ssd will be ssd of this vehicle plus ssd of this vehicle so ssd 1 plus ssd 2 this is what we require now if suppose the value of velocity and everything is not given separately for vehicle 1 and vehicle 2 you can just simply find out the ssd for the given data and multiply it by 2 that will give us the ssd required on one lane two way road i hope it is clear to all of you now the next topic is overtaking side distance now let's talk about overtaking side distance but before that let me tell you one more thing when we were talking about this uh, lag distance and everything let me tell you that the height of object that irc considers in ssd it is 0.15 meter and height of driver i from the road surface that it considers is 1.2 meter okay not important for now it will be used in the later topic now osd let's see how the osd works and what are the factors affecting the osd but first let's see what is actually overtaking side distance now overtaking side distance is basically the distance uh, should uh, that can be always in the sight of a driver in uh, manner to uh, overtake any vehicle okay now let's see what actually happens in uh, osd so osd basically is nothing but for two way road it is d1 d2 d3 for two way and osd is d1 plus d2 for one way now let's see how it works now what is d1 uh before that i'll explain you how what is d1 d2 and d3 so that you know what actually we are talking about now the thing is that uh, okay i'll tell you this with a story that will work a small story i will i mean it will take hardly one minute okay are we ready for the story i think we are okay now let's say that uh, there is a guy whose name is a b and c there are three guys who are a b c now what happened is that a guy is in the office right now and he get a call from his house and his father is calling him and his father told him that uh, come home now we have people here for your wedding the girl is here with the parents because like see he is not interested in wedding and all now he's like no i don't want to marry him. just tell them i'm not interested or i'm not ready yet so his father scolds him and said no no you have to come right now only otherwise it will be very disrespectful so he said father i'm not coming i have a meeting in just two minutes and i have to put the call down so his father said okay it is your choice uh, i'm sending you the photo on whatsapp just have a look and text me back uh, in the middle of the meeting also if you text back i will do something and i will ask them to go that's what his father said now his father sent him the whatsapp image of the girl and as soon as he saw as soon as he saw the image of the girl he he actually noticed that this is the exact same girl whom she used to love in the college time like crush one-sided love abhi what he'll do will he attend the meeting or will he just rush to his house what he'll do what do you think Bado, what do you think? What are you going to do? Obviously run, right? So he did the same thing. He rushed towards the house. So he is going towards the house. Now, uh, obviously he is going to move as fast as possible, right? So he is moving with the design speed of the road. Every road have a design speed. We'll talk about that also. But... For now, you just understand this is the speed greater than the maximum speed also. So he's moving with the design speed. 
now he is moving with a design speed but actually what happened in the middle of the road he saw a vehicle moving in front of him in which b is sitting now do you know who is b do you know who is b so b is the guy b is the guy whose girlfriend has gone with his parents with her parents to the house of a for getting married to a moe moe so what do you think what will be the mood of b obviously sad right sad so b is not in the mood b is moving very slow very slow it is moving he is not you know driving fast so he is slow he is moving slow now a is coming from here and it saw b in the middle of the road now a has two options number 1 either slow down its speed and keep following vehicle b or second option just overtake vehicle b and go home as fast as possible so obviously we know the choice right ki what he must have considered okay there is one more thing there is a another guy c now who is c c is brother of a younger brother to whom his father told him go and bring samosa for the relatives before they get cold come back but c is uh, very much fond of smoking as well so now in the same time he has to bring samosa also he has to smoke as well so now what do you think on what speed the c will come here in this direction rush or slow obviously it will also rush so c is coming from this direction now c is basically moving at design speed as well design speed design speed less than design speed this much is clear if this much is clear then you already know the whole concept okay sir now what will happen is because this uh, a wants to you know because this a wants to because this a wants to a wants to uh, overtake vehicle b right so what will happen is when you want to overtake someone you can't just uh, you know uh, drive fast and uh, turn right accelerate then turn left this is not how it works you have to slow down your speed you have to bring your speed equal to the speed of the vehicle whom you want to overtake and you have to check whether if any vehicle is coming from the forward direction or not if you think that there is no vehicle coming then you go to the right in the opposite lane you accelerate you overtake the vehicle b and then you again come back to your original lane that is how the overtaking take place right now here the distance a has covered the distance a has covered the distance a has covered while following b is d1 okay is d1 this is the distance that vehicle a covered while following vehicle b now once vehicle a is sure there is no vehicle coming it will start overtaking and come back to its original lane now this distance is d2 d2 is the distance for which the vehicle b a uh, vehicle a was accelerating and in that same duration when the vehicle a was accelerating the distance covered by vehicle c is d3 that is the reason why when i say for one way road d3 is not there now you understood right why d3 is not there okay <clears throat> now it is d1 d2 d3 d1 is v into t here t is the dist is the time for which vehicle a followed vehicle b now this velocity will be of vehicle a or vehicle b quickly tell me time this is the time for which vehicle a following vehicle b so this velocity is of vehicle a or vehicle b 
गुड है वहीकल बी ओनली राइट बिकॉज फॉलोइंग तो वी बी टी तो दिस इज डी वन डी टू इज डिस्टेंस बिटवीन वहीकल ए वहीकल बी बिफोर ओवरटेकिंग डिस्टेंस बिटवीन वहीकल ए वहीकल बी आफ्टर ओवरटेकिंग एंड द डिस्टेंस फॉर विच द वहीकल ए वॉज एक्सेलरेटिंग विच इज बी सो आई कैन से इट इज टू एस दिस इज एस वन एस टू लाइक स्पेस हेडवे बिफोर ओवरटेकिंग स्पेस हेडवे आफ्टर ओवरटेकिंग बट इन नॉर्मल केसेस इफ इट इज नॉट गिवेन सेपरेटली यू कैन कंसिडर देम इक्वल एंड राइट टू एस प्लस नाउ द स्पेस हेडवे यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड स्पेस हेडवे इज एक्चुअली पॉइंट सेवन वी बी प्लस सिक्स दैट इज द स्पेस हेडवे राइट तो प्लस वी बी into capital T. Now capital T is the time for which the vehicle was accelerating. Vehicle A was accelerating. So T is technically equals to two S one plus S two by A. S one before overtaking space at way after. But we are taking them equal. So four S by A. A is the acceleration. D three is design velocity. into capital t the distance traveled by d3 i mean vehicle c when vehicle a was overtaking or acceleration accelerating right now this is everything you need to know now here are few challenges that you may find so that i will clear for you number 1 what if velocity of vehicle b is not given can we still find the uh, you know values can we still do the calculations yes you can still ca you can still do the calculation how you can do let's see if not given let's say number 1 v b or v b if this is not given only the design speed is given how to find out the value so vb is actually equals to design speed in meter per second minus 4.5 meter per second vb in kilometer per hour is velocity design velocity in kilometer per hour minus 16 they are equal only so do not get confused number 1 number 2 if t is not given then t has to be considered 2 seconds remember in ssd it was 2.5 here it is 2 seconds third acceleration not given so acceleration as per morth is 2.5 km per hour per second but we have to put in meter per second square so it will be 0.69 meter per second square so that's all about overtaking side distance any doubt you can please ask otherwise we'll move to the next concept here height of driver i 1.2 meter height of object is also 1.2 meter because object is nothing but other vehicle only if clear write cc or hard sign if doubt ask your doubt Okay, if I give you a quick question, can you please answer that? Okay, the question is: Design velocity is hundred kmph. Please tell me d one, d two, d three, s, and t also. Go for it. Answer.
for it i just leave now i just wanted to change my clothes that's why i gave the question it's very easy moving on uh overtaking side distance there are few points that you should understand number one on divided highway d3 need not to be considered there is no point of considering d3 because it is going to be moving in the separate uh, road so that's why number one on divided highway with four or more lane irc suggests that it is not necessary to provide osd but only ssd is sufficient so this is important point can be asked in the statement question moving on okay there is a possibility that you cannot provide the width of the road which is favorable for overtaking at every section so in that case what you are going to do is you are going to provide overtaking zone after some distance in overtaking zone only one thing is important to understand what is the desirable length of the overtaking zone and what is the minimum length of the overtaking zone desirable length of the overtaking zone is five times of osd as per the road and minimum is nothing but it is equal to three times of osd remember this very important next is intermediate side distance suppose if you cannot provide uh, osd on the road what you do instead you provide isd isd is not a concept it is just alternative that is why there is no formula isd is simply equals to two times of ssd so if we compare osd is the biggest or the largest or the longest then isd and smallest of them is stopping side distance moving on now this is the summary of all the height of driver and height of object for all three side distances so uh, ssd 1.2 meter and 0.15 is the height of object isd 1.2 1.2 for both osd 1.2 1.2 both right so so that's height of driver i and the object i hope it is clear to you now the side distance at intersection here we are not interested in the site uh, stopping side distance we are more interested in the side distance because that's what it is uh, going to be needed here now the thing is let's say the vehicle a is coming from here vehicle b is coming from here now the vehicle a actually require this much ssd to stop here and vehicle b require this much ssd to stop here right to avoid the collision on the intersection but the thing is why they will stop when they don't even know they need to stop okay so we have to make sure that the vehicle can see each other on the intersection whether to apply the brake or not so this distance should always be available in the sight of the driver if these two can see themselves at this position when they are at this position then only they will make sure there is no collision at the center and this distance is basically a sight line and it is called as sight distance at intersection how to find out very simple it is nothing but let's say s so s is nothing but it is ssd1 plus ssd2 under root i think it is simple sorted clear any doubts anyone i hope there is no doubt moving on <clears throat> now the horizontal curve uh, in horizontal curve we need to understand uh, the condition of skid and overturning when there will be a skid when there will be a overturning so if you want i can uh, tell you the entire derivation and everything it won't take much time please say yes or no if you want it say yes if no then write n y or n hsd i'll tell you in the valley curve it is nothing but ssd at night please write y n okay so basically here uh, to avoid the lateral skid and to avoid the overturning we have to have just one thing in our mind and that is p by w ratio here p is centrifugal force w is weight of vehicle and this ratio p by w is called as impact factor or or centrifugal ratio 
एनीथिंग यू कैन कॉल इट बोथ आर राइट सो इफ यू वांट टू अवॉइड द लेटरल स्किट देन पी बाय डब्ल्यू शुड बी लेस देन और इक्वल्स टू कोफिशियंट ऑफ लेटरल फ्रिक्शन एंड इफ यू वांट टू अवॉइड द ओवर टर्निंग देन इट हैज टू बी लेस देन बी बाय टू एच हियर बी इज द सेंटर टू सेंटर डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम हियर टायर आई मीन एंड एच इज द डिस्टेंस ऑफ सी जी फ्रॉम द रोड ओके सो दिस इज द कंडीशन नेक्स्ट इज सुपर एलिवेशन सो वाई सुपर एलिवेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड वॉट इज सुपर एलिवेशन तो सुपर एलिवेशन इज नथिंग वेन यू रेज द आउटर एज ऑफ द रोड दैट बेसिकली इज सुपर एलिवेशन ओके नाउ बिकॉज वाई वी नीड इट सी वेन द वहीकल इज मूविंग लाइक दिस ऑब्वियसली वॉट विल हैपन अ फ्रिक्शन सेंट्रिकल फोर्स विल बी जनरेटेड इन दिस डायरेक्शन बट टू अवॉइड एनी काइंड ऑफ स्किडिंग there will be lateral friction which will be generated so the vehicle will not skid now the thing is if the speed of this vehicle increases then tell me one thing centrifugal force and friction force are they going to increase in same ratio or centrifugal force will increase more while the friction force remains same or less a Nothing will happen if the speed increase because ratio remains same. B. Centrifugal force increase, friction remains same or less. Choose your option wisely. <clears throat> same ratio. Someone said, "Okay, guys, centrifugal force is uh, m v square by r." and friction force is coefficient of friction into w if the velocity increases obviously this will increase and when velocity increase f decrease f decrease means this entire thing will decrease so what will happen the problem lies here that if this velocity increase friction force will in i mean friction force will be lesser but centrifugal force will be more because of which high probability of skidding of this vehicle in the lateral direction right so how to deal with this so right now the thing is when the vehicle is moving like this it has just one thing that is weight right and because of this weight what it is uh, getting is fw which is the friction force now the thing is how 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 i can make sure that there is one more component that can help the vehicle to fight against the Uh, centrifugal force for that it is very simple to understand what we do is we simply tilt the road slightly uh, and we raise the outer edge now because of this what happened i'll just talk about this one thing because of this the weight is moving downward but normal to the road there is a component which is w cos theta right and there is a component which is w sin theta right so here what actually happened is we have got another new component along with the friction which will help me to fight against the centrifugal force so this is why we actually tilt the road so now if i talk about the super elevation the general formula of super elevation is e this is the rate of super elevation plus f coefficient of lateral friction by 1 minus ef equals v square by 127 r r is radius in meter can you tell me what is the unit of velocity good morning good morning chulo kabhi jude can you tell me the value of velocity unit <clears throat> okay great That's kilometer per hour. Good. Now, uh, the thing is that this formula is not that much common, right? Mostly we have seen this formula as e plus f v square upon one twenty seven hour, right? So is this wrong? No, actually this is not wrong. This is the right formula. and uh, this has to be used everywhere but just to you know uh, for the sake of simplicity we go for from here to here but where is this 1 minus ef gone where is it so let's understand that where is it 
Now there is basically a table which is being given by Indian Road Congress for super elevation value, right? So the maximum value, the minimum value, uh, different terrains are given. Now the thing is, let's consider the highest value of camber irrespective of the terrain. Can you tell me what is the highest value of super elevation rate of super elevation? Please answer. Even if I choose the highest value, what is that highest value? 10%. Okay, let's put the 10 value here. 10%. In this case, so 1 minus 10%.15. It is 0.985, which is equals to 1 only. Almost equals to 1. So if you choose any less value, it will be more close to 1. That is the reason why we are not considering it. But remember this one thing. If the value of this is going to be more, which is happening in case of racetrack and all, then this formula will fail. So if you get anything greater than 25% or maybe 30%, that this may happen in case of racing track. Don't use this formula. Please go for this one. Right, sir. So this is uh, about super elevation. Moving on. Now, uh, super elevation, I think I've already talked about. Now, let's talk about different type of super elevations. Number one is equilibrium super elevation. Now, what is equilibrium super elevation? See, the thing is that when the vehicle is turning on a curve, what happens is, let's say this is the front of a vehicle. Okay, this is the front of the vehicle and vehicle is going to move in this direction. So, uh, this is the outer edge and this is the inner edge. So, what is going to happen is the outer tire will be having more reaction than inner tire. Right? Because it is, has the tendency to overturn in this direction which is about this point. So, that is why outer tire have more reaction than the inner tire. This is a fact. So, if... I somehow provide the super elevation in such a way that both the tire are having the same reaction. Okay. Both the tire are having same reaction on the curve. That condition or that super elevation is known as equilibrium super elevation. So, the super elevation required to counteract the full centrifugal force is called equilibrium. At equilibrium super elevation, pressure at inlet and outlet tire is same. Now, if the pressure is same on internal, I mean inner tire and outer tire, that means, can I say the vehicle, for the vehicle, it is like it is moving in forward direction, straight road, not on a curve, yes or no? So in that case, will there be any kind of uh, centrifugal there on the vehicle? There will be, but it is being taken care by the super elevation. Now, if there is no effect of centrifugal force on the vehicle, will there be any frictional force generated? Because frictional force don't come it by itself. I mean, friction force come by itself only and it only comes as a reaction to an action. Right, sir? So in that case, friction force becomes zero. So for equilibrium super elevation, F is zero. That basically means that our general formula becomes this. So this is the equilibrium super elevation any doubt anyone please ask super elevation pe question haan ji aate hain does this happen practically no Equilibrium conditions are generally there just to get a reference of things. 
after after equilibrium super elevation we have to check for f also no you are not designing right now <clears throat> next is the design super elevation right now let's say how to get the value of design super elevation now in design super elevation what actually happen is that uh, I cannot consider the maximum velocity during the design of my super elevation. If I consider the maximum velocity, then the super elevation will be too much and the vehicle moving with less speed or minimum speed, there is a chance that they may topple inside. So that is why we avoid maximum velocity. We also cannot consider the minimum, minimum velocity. If you consider the minimum velocity, what will happen? the velocity of the vehicle which are moving or the vehicle which are moving at maximum velocity they will skid outside so what we do we do so what we can do is we will consider the velocity as 75% of design speed okay sir also while I am designing anything, can I rely on a force which is coming by itself? I am not the one who is designing it. Can I rely on such forces? Can I rely on such forces? No, I cannot. Right. So during the super elevation, there is one force which is friction force. Now friction force is the one which I am not designing, right? It is coming by itself only. I am not the one who can, you know, uh, decide the exact, exact value for this particular force or design that particular force, right? So that is the reason what I am considering. It is an assumption only that I am going to design super elevation in such a way that even if in some day, unfortunately, friction is not being developed on the road then also the vehicle will remain safe so what we are doing is during the design we are considering f as zero so putting these two condition in our uh, formula what do we get general formula is e plus f v square upon 127 r so F0 E is equals instead of velocity, you have to put 0.75 of velocity. If you simplify this, that's your design formula. Okay. Now this is your design formula and remember one thing it is also called as mixed traffic condition. It is also called as mixed traffic condition, right? Now let's see how to design a super elevation. You will have uh, the knowledge of the velocity and the radius of the curve. Now based on that you have to find out what is the design value of super elevation. First of all, what you will do, you will calculate the design super elevation by using the formula. So use the design formula, which is E is equals to V square upon 225R. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this calculated value of E, right? There are three things that is that are possible. I mean, there are three cases that are possible what are those three cases whether this e it is going to be greater than minimum value of e given by irc which i showed you in the table and it will be less than max or this e will be less than minimum value or E will be greater than the maximum value. These three conditions are there which can be occurred. Right? These three things are there. Now, if E is more than E minimum and less than E maximum, first case, in that case, you will provide 
e as e only i mean this value only you will provide in the road as a super elevation value simple if this e value is coming less than e minimum then you will provide value equals to e minimum which is equals to camber as per the table now if e calculated comes more than e maximum then you have to provide e as e maximum now when you are providing e as e maximum in this case we have to apply a check now how that check work let's understand so uh, i will check that if i am putting or if i am using maximum value of super elevation then what is going to be the friction developed here in this road so for that you will use the formula the very simple formula that you already know that is e max plus f develop v square upon 127r now there is a hack that you should remember if f is here always remember here 127 will come okay remember this or you can remember with 225 f will never come now here you know the emax value you know v you know r based on this you can find out f develop now there is a possibility f develop coming less than or greater than uh, less than or equals to 0.15 or it is coming greater than 0.15 there are only two possibilities right if f comes less than 0.15 perfect okay no problem but if this condition occurs then we have to change the velocity i mean we have to restrict the velocity velocity cannot be same as given in the question now how to find out the new velocity for that you have to consider e max plus f e max plus 0.15 allowable velocity this is how we find out the value of allowable velocity any doubts anyone please ask that will be checked for super elevation value let's fix or change for different condition obviously the check uh, you have to apply as these conditions only maximum value as per this terrain kindly ask if you have any doubt If clear, right, CC. Are bowl do yar. Hey, do bowl doubt, doubt, pucho. जिनको डाउट पूछना है उनको फैकल्टी नहीं मिलता और जो फैकल्टी बोलता है डाउट पूछो उससे पूछते नहीं हो नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज एक्स्ट्रा वाइडनिंग नाउ इट इज प्रोवाइडेड वेर एवर द कर्व इज देयर एंड द रीजन ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग द एक्स्ट्रा वाइडनिंग इज क्वाइट सिंपल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट ऑफ ट्रैकिंग इज बीइंग कॉम्पेंसेटेड to increase the visibility of the driver at curve to counteract the transverse skidding if some skidding is happening because of uh, more centrifugal force and speed 
साइकोलॉजिकल टेंडेंसी टू मेंटेन द साइड गैप वाइल ओवरटेकिंग द कर्व दिस इज टेंडेंसी व्हेन यू आर यू नो हैविंग अ और ओवरटेकिंग समवन ऑन अ कर्व देन यू ट्राई टू मेक मोर गैप बिटवीन देम एंड यू नाउ व्हाट इज ऑफ ट्रैकिंग वी टॉक्ड अबाउट ऑफ ट्रैकिंग नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ऑफ ट्रैकिंग नाउ ऑफ ट्रैकिंग इज बेसिकली दिस so when you are moving in a straight road that time the vehicle front wheel and the rear wheel they cover the same distance but it doesn't happen in a curve in curve what happen is if the front wheel will cover this distance the rear wheel will try to cover the minimum distance now this extra distance is basically called as off tracking this is called as off tracking now off tracking is basically find out with the help of formula which is L square by two R. L is length of wheel base. If not given, take six point one meter. This is off tracking. Now the extra widening is basically mechanical widening plus psychological. So the widening provided based on the off tracking, it is called as mechanical widening. Now this is true for one lane, but I want to provide widening for all the lane. That is why I just simply multiply n, which is number of lane here, and n l square by two r becomes mechanical widening. Remember, l square by two r is off tracking, and n l square by two r is mechanical widening. For psychological widening, you have the formula velocity by nine point five root r. Remember this. स्पीड रेस्ट्रिक्शन कब लगाते हैं सो वेन एवर यू आर डन यू यू आर डिजाइनिंग द सुपर एलिवेशन एंड यू फाइंड दैट योर कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू इज कमिंग मोर देन द मैक्सिम वैल्यू गिवेन बाई इंडियन रोड कांग्रेस देन यू चूज द मैक्सिम वैल्यू ऑफ सुपर एलिवेशन बट फॉर दैट यू नीड टू अप्लाई अ चेक वेर यू फाइंड आउट द डेवलप्ड कोफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन विच इज लेटरल फ्रिक्शन इफ द लेटरल फ्रिक्शन कम्स आउट टू बी ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट वन फाइव then apply the restriction ठीक है सर आपको ऐसे ऐसी अच्छा अभी उस टाइम जब मैं क्लास लेता हूँ तो बोलते हो अमन सर किधर है और जब अमन सर क्लास लेते हो तो बोलते हो मैं किधर हूँ दोनों चाहिए एक साथ है सर न्यूमेरिकल भी करवाइएगा प्लीज सर न्यूमेरिकल मेरे पास आज तो नहीं है सेशन में बीच बीच में क्वेश्चन रहेंगे तो अगर आप सिर्फ न्यूमेरिकल के लिए आए तो फिर आपको जाना पड़ेगा सॉरी मैं बेसिकली पूरा सब्जेक्ट रिवाइज कराने के लिए लाया हूँ तो इसलिए मेरे पास है नहीं okay moving on now a question comes here where do we provide this right this is the question i mean okay extra widening we have got as nl square by 2r plus v by 9.5 root r correct that's your extra widening superb now remember that if radius is greater than 300 meter in that case extra widening has to be zero if radius is greater than 50 meter but smaller than 300 meter 
in that case half extra widening inner curve and half outer ठीक है तो आधा अंदर आधा बाहर वट एवर वैल्यू यू आर गेटिंग फॉर एक्स्ट्रा वाइडनिंग इफ रेडियस इज लेस देन फिफ्टी मीटर देन एक्स्ट्रा वाइडनिंग हैज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड इनर साइड ओनली एंड टायर ओके इज क्लियर एनी डाउट एनी वन गॉड इट सर क्वेश्चंस थ्योरी पर आते हैं न्यूमेरिकल मेजॉरिटी न्यूमेरिकल्स मूविंग ऑन नेक्स्ट टू वी हैव इज द ट्रांजेशन कर नो व्हाई डू वी नीड ट्रांजेशन कर सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड सो इट्स अंडरस्टैंड हियर ओनली सी व्हाट एक्चुअली हैपन इज सपोज इफ देर इज अ स्ट्रेट रोड is a straight road and then it is getting a like now next uh, after this we are having a curve right so this is the point where curve started now the thing is a straight line having the radius as infinity here the radius is any finite value r so centrifugal force in this case centrifugal force is what mv square by r r infinity so this is zero here so here no centrifugal force here the centrifugal force is mv square by r so there is a centrifugal force so at this point there is no centrifugal force at this point there is a centrifugal force so what will happen suddenly jerk will be experienced by the driver so this is one problem next problem for this straight section the camber is there on the road looks something like this so the section of road looks something like this whereas on the curve the section of the road is having a super elevation so the road looks something like this another problem we cannot change it right because from this point to this point when you are coming in that case uh, here the section is like this and here the section is like this you cannot do this immediately problem third problem here on the straight road the length of uh, the width of the road is w whereas the width of this road is w plus w e okay understood so at this point width is w at this point width is w plus w e again a problem uh, like suddenly you have to change the thickness of the road so problem are too many here the solution is one and that solution is called as transition curve so what is the purpose of transition curve firstly to gradually introduce centrifugal force to avoid jerk gradually introduce extra widening and super elevation and just because it's it look good aesthetic appearance that is the reason okay now the transition curve we have to understand we can provide you know we can choose any of them as a transition curve we can go for spiral we can go for lemon skate we can go for cubic parabola uh, yeah but the ideal as per the indian road congress the ideal shape of a transition curve is a spiral for highway engineering so if those this question comes you have to take a spiral now in this what is the question they are asking they are asking you basically the length of the transition curve now to find out the length of transition curve you need to understand that there are three ways length of transition curve what are those three ways way number 1 on the basis of uh, rate of change of centrifugal acceleration second on the basis of rate of introduction of super elevation what is the third one 
third one third one is nothing irc has given call it empirical out of these three values whichever is maximum that becomes the length of transition curve okay so now let's see what are the formulas for all of them first of all on the basis of rate of change of centrifugal acceleration just a minute yeah the next thing is where i was okay yes rate of change of centrifugal acceleration all right so uh, i was thinking i'll just talk about a little technicality here yeah you only interested in formula please say yes or no only formula then yes quite technical knowledge also then say no Okay, we have people who want to understand the technicality also. <coughs> so uh, let's say we have a transition curve, something like this. Okay, so the length of this transition curve is let's say L S. the distance uh, is being covered this ls distance is being covered in time dt and the velocity is let's say v while you know covering this distance of the vehicle now here we need to understand something called as jerk c it is basically rate of change of acceleration specifically centrifugal acceleration da by dt now what is the uh, acceleration here at the beginning centrifugal acceleration zero here v square by r so change is how much v square by r minus zero this change happened in dt time right can you tell me this time in form of distance and speed that is distance by speed only right so ls by v symbol so here you can see that t is equals to v cube by rls or ls is equals to v cube by cr so this is how we find this value of v cube by cr velocity is in meter per second right so now here if you want to find out c value so c is technically 80 by 75 plus velocity in kilometer per hour value ranges from 0.5 to 0.8 meter per second cube so this is one thing Moving on to the next formula, which is the rate of reduction of super elevation, simple sorted E and W plus W, E and W plus W by 2. When it happens is, this happens if uh, the pavement is rotated with respect to inner edge. And this when rotated with respect to center line. Okay, means this. Uh, N values are given, otherwise it will be given in the exam also. Clear? Any doubts? Anyone? Okay, next is uh, the empirical formula. It goes like for plane and rolling terrain, it is how much? 
टू पॉइंट सेवन वी स्क्वायर बाई आर एंड फॉर हिली इट इज सिंपली वी स्क्वायर बाय आर सिंपल फॉर्म मिला आई होप यू आर क्लियर विद द ट्रांजिशन कर्व लेंथ फॉर्मूला ऑल थ्री एनी डाउट एनी वन यू कैन काइंडली आस्क ओके नेक्स्ट थिंग इज शिफ्ट वॉट इज अ शिफ्ट तो शिफ्ट इज बेसिकली सी सपोजिटली this is the path that the road uh, was covering like earlier what was happening the road was going like this straight and suddenly a curve right but now we have provided a transition curve now when you have provided a transition curve what has happened this so this must this much shift was introduced just because the curve is starting from here now so this much shift is being introduced in the road and this shift can be find out as ls square upon 24r where ls you know what is ls length of transition curve moving on next is setback if uh, everything is set clear right till now please send me a heart sign or write cc or speed is okay now or it is still slow that also you can tell Okay, I think everything is clear. I'm surprised that why you are not interested in the concepts. When I'm asking if you want concept or formula, you are asking for formula. I mean that though you can also revise by yourself while you are watching the class. Just asking. I mean, it's your choice. okay now moving on uh, setback i'll quickly tell you what is setback and then i'll talk more about it in numerical form so uh, suppose we are having a curve something like this all right now the thing is that uh, okay now let's say uh, wah kya curve banaya bhai ऑलमोस्ट पैरल एयर क्रेजी आई शुड शुड हैव गॉन टू आर्ट्स ओके एनी वेज और राइट नाउ द थिंग इज लेट्स से दैट देर इज अ व्हीकल दिस सिंगल लेन रोड ओनली एंड देर इज अ व्हीकल मूविंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन देर इज सम डेबरीज ऑन द रोड राइट now uh, this uh, is let's say the stopping distance for this vehicle right now this vehicle will stop i mean it will start the stopping operation once it can see these debris means this much sight line should be available by the driver then only it can apply the brake or you know can stop before colliding but if suppose somehow we have a plantation over here or any building or anything then what will happen then these debris will be seen to the driver when the vehicle oops when the vehicle will reach here 
and now obviously the distance is very less and it will not be able to stop itself and there will be a collision so what we have learned from here is that from the center line of the road till this line of sight this much distance should be clear from any kind of obstruction right and this distance here is called as m and m is nothing but set back distance got it everybody what is set back distance is it clear good so now let's see how to find out set back distance yeah we will consider the case when length of curve is greater than s only right for gate this case is enough that uh, length of curve is greater than s now let's see what happen in such cases so as you can see this is a curve and this is set back uh, this is uh, uh, this is the center of the curve this curve obviously this is radius this is also radius this is also radius this entire angle is alpha so this angle has to be alpha by 2 this also be alpha by 2 Achha, if this is alpha by 2 what will be this angle more than alpha by 2 or less than alpha by 2 think wisely and then answer Come on, am I not audible or what? Wow. Same or uh, it should be greater. Good to see. Anyways, uh, where was I? Alpha by 2, alpha by 2 is here, m is this, okay, okay, cool. So it is very uh, easy to understand now. I'll do one thing, I'll just name them. Let me call this point A, let me call this point B, let me call this point O. Right, so I can clearly say that m is equals to AB. Right, and if I want to find out AB, AB is nothing but it is equals to AO minus BO. Now AO is what? AO is radius. What is BO? So BO I don't know but I know this is R. So if you uh, see closely this triangle. So you will easily understand that uh, this is R and I want this. So this is going to be R cos alpha by 2. So this is your formula of setback distance can take r common becomes 1 minus cos alpha by 2 got it okay now if you talk about the alpha by 2 how to find out the value of alpha by 2 so alpha by 2 is basically s by 2r now this is in radian if you want to convert this in degree then simply multiply 180 by pi to this or you can simply tap on the button in your virtual calculator on the top left corner where rad is written just click rad for this much only and you will get the answer okay uh, that's it that's it that's it okay now this was uh, for the single lane. Now suppose if you are having a multi lane, like more than one lane is there, then how you are going to deal with this? So again, this is very simple. If you are having two lanes, in that case, what will happen? See,
okay now uh, there will be uh, two ways to find out the to find out the value of your um, uh, this uh, setback distance either you can find out from the center of the inner lane or from the center of the road it is your choice right not your choice as per the question you have to answer now let me make the center line for both the lanes if let's say this much distance is d obviously this will be d this will be d this will be d can i say w plus w e should be equals to 4d correct so d should be w plus w e by 4 easy to understand there is uh, no i mean uh, very heavy logic that we have used here right so now let's say the vehicle is here All right, and this is the center. So this would be radius. This would be radius. This would be radius. Okay. Now let me uh, give the name to them. Obviously, this will be alpha by two. This is alpha by two. So we'll give the same name as I have done earlier. Let me call this as uh, A, B, O, and there's a new point C. So now when I'm talking about from the center line, can you tell me what is actually, uh, what, what, what is the setback distance for that case from the center line of the road if I'm talking about? From the center line. From the center line, setback distance is CB. And if you look closely, CB is equals to CO minus BO. Where CO, CO is radius minus D. And BO, BO is what? So this distance from here to here is R minus D. So R minus D cos alpha by 2. So this is your center line, from center line. If you want inner lane, from inner lane, inner lane will be what? Tell me. This is center line, oh I'm sorry, center line of inner lane I was writing. Okay, now let's see the center line of the road because both are center line only. That's why I had to write the entire thing. Center line of inner lane and now center line of road. So center line of road will be what? AB, right? You were correct. AB. AB will be how much? AO minus BO. What is AO? Radius. What is B O R minus D cos alpha by 2? Here alpha by 2 will be quite different. Alpha by 2 will be S by 2 R minus D actually. 2180 by pi. Any doubts anyone? Kindly ask. Is it clear? Both the cases. Both the cases are this clear. Once again. So uh, when I talk about center line of inner lane. So center line of inner lane means I am talking about CB. CB is the CB is the setback distance. Right. To find out CB I can say CO minus BO will give me CB. So CO minus BO. CO is how much? So AO is radius. This distance is D. 
सो सी ओ विल बी आर माइनस डी नेक्स्ट यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट बी ओ नाउ फ्रॉम हियर टिल हियर इज रेडियस राइट एंड दिस इज डी सो फ्रॉम हियर टिल हियर विल बी आर माइनस डी दिस इज आर माइनस डी दिस इज एल्फा बाय टू सो आर माइनस डी कॉस एल्फा बाय टू इज बी ओ सो दैट्स वर्ड आई रोट हियर From center line of the road itself means A B is the uh, is the setback distance. So A O minus B O gives me the setback distance. A O is what radius. So radius B O already found out R minus D cos alpha by two. Any other student have doubt? Please ask. Any other student have doubt? Please ask. Clear? Okay. All right. Uh, let me give you a quick question. Right? You do this. because very less question is being asked from here that's why i'm giving i'm giving the direct values not entire you know statement so we have a two lane road length of curve is given you can take it as 200 meter what else radius is given 300 meter width of pavement is given seven point five meter ssd given eighty meter setback you have to tell from center line of inner lane please answer this and give me a minute i'll just come back i'll get some coffee for me till then please answer
हाँ जी करेक्ट जस्ट टू वाई वाई जस्ट टू I hope we are preparing for gate 2024, not 25. Please stay active. Okay, let's see. So, uh, what do we have? <clears throat> Two-lane road we have, so definitely we need to find out the value of D. So let's do that only first. So the value of D would be how much? Uh, please give me the value. I'm not going to calculate. You will give the value. I'll use different color. I think it's not visible. How much is 7.5 by 4? Can you please tell me everybody? 1.875. Superb. Very well. Now it's done. Uh, the next thing I would like to get is the value of uh, alpha by 2. S by 2 r minus d would like to change this in uh, degrees for 180 by pi how much alpha by 2 is how much degrees alpha by 2 is how much in degrees Seven point six eight degrees. Cool. Now I want the value center line of the inner lane. Just now I have shown you that how to find that value. So setback will be how much? It will be uh, r minus d one minus cos alpha by two. So how much is this? How much is this? Two point six seven four meter. That is the value of setback. But remember, this was just a quick, uh, you can say, a trick question. You can say because they were asking you the values in mm. We always find the value in meter only. They were just trying to, you know, be uh, quite uh, different. So that's why they just asked mm. So the answer, this answer, if you put, it will be wrong. The answer will be two six seven four mm. Because we have to understand in NAT what they are asking, unit what they are asking. That is very important. If clear, right, CC, if doubt, ask your doubt. Okay. Next is the curve resistance. Now let's see how the curve resistance work and what is curve resistance. All right. Now understand. <clears throat> So what actually happen is when the vehicle is moving in straight road like this and it is a rear wheel drive. So the power generated by the engine given to the tire, it will generate a force which is called as tractive force. It will always be in the forward direction, right? Like this. Why? Because obviously the body is rigid and it is a rear wheel drive, not the front wheel. If front wheel is there, then wherever the wheel will turn, this value of T will go in that direction only. And now what happened on a curve? On curve actually what happened is that your vehicle when it is turning right this time the tractive force is acting in this direction but vehicle is moving in this direction. So this angle turning angle let's say this is theta. So vehicle has provided you this much of the tractive effort but you have utilized how much? t cos theta so the gap is the loss so loss is t minus t cos theta this is called as tractive and this is angle of turn i hope it is clear all right any doubts anyone very well moving on next is gradient 
So gradient is nothing but slope only longitudinal slope. We are talking about here. We have different kind of gradients like ruling, limiting, exception. As you move downwards, the value of uh, the gradient increases means it becomes steeper. So the first choice of any designer, if you want to provide a gradient on a vertical profile, you will always choose the ruling gradient. It is the best. So it is the maximum gradient within which a designer wants to design the vertical profile of a road. It depends on the vehicle design speed, topography and pulling power. If any one of them is not uh, as per the requirement, in that case, uh, we have to go for limiting gradient. For limiting gradient, basically what is happening, it is steeper than the ruling gradient, right? And it is only provided when the cost of construction of ruling gradient is not justified. Next, if you are not even able to get the limiting gradient, then we move for the exception gradient. Now, exception gradient, as the name suggests, it is steeper than limiting gradient also. Now, it is very steep. Now, it is steep. That is the only reason why we cannot provide this for a longer stretch of a road. So, there is a restriction over here. It is steeper than the limiting gradient and is provided in exceptional cases. It should not be provided for a stretch more than 100 meter. So we cannot provide it for more than 100 meter. Is it clear? Moving on. The next thing is uh, the minimum gradient. There is another one which is the minimum gradient and uh, doesn't matter if you have a flat profile, if you have a curved profile, doesn't matter. We have to provide minimum gradient at any point of time. Now, what is the pro uh, what is the need? Need is very simple to make sure there is a proper surface drainage. Minimum gradient for cement concrete road is one in 500. So better is the surface of the road. Uh, lesser will be the slope required, right? So one in 500 is for the cement concrete for inferior quality one in 200 and earthen road. It is one in 100. So remember, as the quality is degrading, the slope is increasing. Next is the grade compensation. Now, as you all know, just now we have seen that whenever there is a curve, there will be a loss of tractive effort, which is called as curve resistance, right? Also, when the vehicle is moving in the upward direction, something like this, what is going to happen? The weight is going to act downwards and there will be a component W cos theta, but there will be another component W sin theta acting against the direction of motion of the vehicle. Can I say it will provide a loss to the vehicle's pulling power? Yes or no? W sin theta, is it helping the, uh, is it helping the car or is it actually providing difficulty and losses to the car? Definitely it is providing the loss, right? So here is another loss. Now, if you just uh, try to imagine, it is very simple to imagine that suppose if you are having a hill road, what happened on a hill road? It is something like this, right? So you can see there is a horizontal curve as well as there is a vertical curve provided. So you will be getting both the losses together. You will get the uh, curve resistance also and because of W sin theta as well, you will get the loss. Now to compensate this loss, you don't want these many losses in one go. What you will do, you will not uh, touch this radius or anything. You will not uh, be concerned about the uh, horizontal curve. What you can do is you can reduce the vertical profile or you can simply change or you can do something about the vertical curve, not the horizontal curve. So what you did, you actually reduced or compensated the gradient. You have reduced the gradient. Now, uh, the gradient that you were having earlier, let's say it is ruling gradient. The gradient which you removed, 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 that is called as grade compensation. And after removing grade compensation from the ruling gradient, the left out gradient that you now have is called as compensated compensated grade right so these three things are there that you need to understand always remember indian road congress has told us that there is no requirement there is no need of reducing the gradient of the profile if it is already 
फोर परसेंट और लेस सो इफ ग्रेडियंट इज ऑलरेडी फोर परसेंट और लेस देन फोर परसेंट नो ग्रेड कॉम्पनसेशन हैज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड वी हैव टू यूज द सेम प्रोफाइल नाउ We have to find out grade compensation. Grade compensation is thirty plus R by R and seventy five by R. Out of these two, whichever is minimum, we will go for it. Once you get this, what you need to find out is the compensated grade. So ruling gradient minus grade compensation. This will give you compensated gradient. IRC says compensation not provided for gradient flatter than four percent. Minimum compensated gradient can be four percent. You can't go less than that. Okay. I have a question for you. Quickly, please answer this question and let's see how many of you are right. Okay. So I want to uh, know the value of compensated gradient. If radius is sixty meter and gradient is, let's say. Six percent. Please answer. At what time you get your break? First break. I'm I'm uh, not aware of it actually. That's why I'm asking. All right. So here, what we need to find out is first we need to find out the grade compensation, thirty plus R by R, and seventy five by R. Thirty plus R by R is one point five percent, which is one point two five percent. We'll go for minimum. So. So. Compensated gradient is going to be how much? Six minus one point two five. That is four point seven five percent. Got it? Super. Next thing. This is done, right? Okay. Now, can you tell me the value is? This is five percent. Same question. Everything same. Now it's five percent. Please answer. Not after this chapter. We'll we'll study. We'll continue till, let's say one one thirty maybe. Let's not be chapter specific. So now what is happening? See the grid compensation remains same. Because I haven't changed the radius or anything, so compensated grade is going to be five minus one point two five, three point seven five, which is less than four percent and not possible. So compensated grade should be four percent only. Okay. Now tell me. Grade compensation. Everything remains same. Everything remains same. Just tell me this value. After traffic engineering will be more actually because it is a long chapter. No, that's why. That's why I'm saying chapter specific is very problematic because uh, that is the longest chapter.
प्लीज आंसर एवरीबडी बता दो भाई ओके सो देर आस्किंग फॉर ग्रेड कॉम्पनसेशन नाउ सो एवरीथिंग इज सेम ओनली सो ग्रेड कॉम्पनसेशन विल बी थर्टी प्लस आर बाय आर एंड सेवेंटी फाइव बाय आर सो दिस विल बी वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट दिस विल बी वन पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट बट ऑब्वियस यू कैन से वन पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट इज द राइट आंसर राइट but no why because if you choose this as your right answer what will happen you have gradient as 5% and if you say this is your answer so you are you are saying they are not even asking but let's suppose uh, what what you are trying to say you are trying to say that this is going to be the compensated gradient is it possible it is not possible right so uh, it is not possible right because it is uh, greater than uh, it is less than 4% right which is not possible so it has to be 4% only so the gradient which i have as 5% right now it can only go up to 4% so what technically is going to be the value of grade compensation one percent is the answer understood if clear send me a heart sign if doubt please ask your doubt come on guys moving on next is vertical curve and in vertical curve we will be talking about summit and valley now there is a high probability that uh, in our terrain there is a chance that there is a profile something like this on the road or there is a profile something like this on the road in such cases we need to provide the curve so in this we need to provide a curve like this here we need to provide a curve like this right so this is a valley curve this is a summit curve so which is convex upward concave downward it is your summit curve concave upward convex downward is your valley curve right now a valley curve or a summit curve they are made up of obviously what two different grades only right there is nothing uh, new here so let's say if we have a summit curve like this so obviously they are made with the help of these two grades correct this could be n1% this could be n2% right now if suppose in the examination because this is a question which is being asked multiple times in the exam um so if suppose they just give you the value of n1 and n2 how we are going to decide whether it is a summit curve or it is a valley curve this question is being asked in 2023 also right and this is not new it is being asked earlier as well so how to decide when you have a valley curve and when you have a summit curve so for that always remember we need to find a deviation angle now what is deviation angle it is n1% minus n2% this is deviation angle if n comes out to be positive then you can say you have a summit curve if deviation angle comes out to be negative then you can say you have a valley curve with this you can easily answer any question 
गॉट इट मूविंग ऑन नाउ वॉट वी नीड इज द लेंथ ऑफ सबमिट कर एंड वेली कर दैट्स वॉट आई मीन द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज हियर so uh, when i talk about length of uh, submit curve um so basically what happen is length of submit curve okay here actually it depends on the side distance all three side distance i mean uh, ssd isd or osd it will be given in the question whatever is given accordingly we have to work out so here we have to first uh, take assumption that my value of uh, submit curve is greater than whatever the isd or osd is given to us when uh, first we assume this okay and based on this there is a formula we find out the value of length of submit curve if this condition is right very good this is your answer if this condition is false then we go for the next condition next case which is length will be less than ssd isd and osd and there is a another formula so let's talk about that formula here so as you can see this is the general formula when you are assuming always assume first always assume that length of submit curve is greater than ssd or osd or isd please remember this okay now what is the general formula here it says ns square by under root 2h plus under root 2h whole square n is deviation angle you have to use here absolute value there is no need of using a, a signs here that will be useless h is height of driver i from the road surface a small h can you guess what is a small h very well that's the object height okay now do i already know what is the value of capital h and small h for ssd osd isd do we already know do we have a standard values yes since we have the values with us why not we make this formula a bit easier to use so if we put the value h 1.2 and h 0.15 which is for ssd so if ssd is given in the question then length of uh, length of submit curve will become ns square upon 4.4 if you put h 1.2 h 0.15 then it will come 4.4 if osd and isd given in the question in that case put 1.2 1.2 if you put 1.2 1.2 final denominator comes out to be 9.6 okay so the formula become very simple ns square upon 4.4 ns square upon 9.6 depending upon what is given ssd or osd and isd now the thing is once you have the formula and you put the values and everything now you will understand you will see whether the answer that you are getting is correct as per the assumption if assumption is failing then you go for the next question i mean then you go for the next assumption which is now let's take length is less for that this is the general formula again the value of hh put hh put and you will get this all right got it Okay, I'm trying to find a question for you. Yeah, got it. So I have a question.
So the question says the length of summit curve required for stopping side distance of 180 meter junction of up gradient 1 and 200 and down gradient 1 in 200. Please find out the value of length of summit curve. What are you? First of all, let's find out the deviation angle and okay, from here you will get 0 0.01. So assuming the first case length will be greater than SSB. How much is this value? Can you please tell me? How much is this value? 73.63. Very well. So, assumption is right or wrong? Assumption is right or wrong? Wrong. Okay. So, we'll go to the next assumption. the values how much you are getting Come on, everybody, solve this. How much is the value? Two into one eighty minus four point four by n minus eighty. Is it possible to have a length as minus eighty? Not possible, right? This assumption also fails. Have you seen a question like this? Both assumption fails. Okay, so this is the rare of the rarest case which can happen. And uh, whenever this happen, what does this mean? So this basically means for the given profile, there is no requirement of providing a summit curve. This is what you need to remember. So if in gate exam, this question comes as MCQ, there will be an option not defined or not required, something like that or if this comes as NAT, just put the value as zero. And if this comes in engineering, uh, engineering uh, services mains, then there you have to write uh, that this value is coming 180 because there you can write, right? So last in, at last you have to write that uh, since the value is coming negative, there is no requirement of uh, stop uh, of summit curve for the given vertical profile. But for uh, the aesthetic purpose, we can provide the summit curve length of 60 meter okay don't write 60 meter for gate or anything it is just for means when you can write and explain yourself that why you are saying 60 right so moving on okay and also remember just don't use 4.4 everywhere why because 
60 meter it is being given by morth only they said if not possible then just give 60 meter for aesthetic purposes that's why and the reason is also specific aesthetic purpose no engineering purpose all right uh, or don't use 4.4 everywhere maybe in some question they can change the capital h and small h so remember this values or this formula also next is the valley curve uh, okay there is an important information here about the summit curve about the curve and the nature so always remember that the ideal curve for any summit curve is circular what is it circular but for simplicity we go for simple or square parabola simple next for valley curve the uh, you know preferable curve is cubic parabola but because uh, there is a small deviation angle between cubic parabola uh, so uh, it is almost work as a square parabola only that's why irc recommends to provide square parabola due to its simplicity so for both the cases summit and valley we go for square parabola only right so please remember now here only uh, you know side distance is not there but we also take care of comfort condition why why we were not talking about comfort condition when we talk about uh, the summit curve the reason is very simple i'll quickly talk about it now here what happened if suppose there is a vehicle and this vehicle is moving in this direction and similarly another vehicle moving on this curve or maybe same vehicle moving on a valley curve what happened is the weight of the vehicle acting downward for both of them right but the centrifugal force for this one is here and the centrifugal force for this one is here so this driver will feel discomfort when it will move on a valley curve that is why we have a comfort condition uh, in this particular case so two values of length we will find out of these two we will go for the maximum one now another thing uh, this problem is coming because of the centrifugal acceleration so do we already know any curve which already is helping us for dealing with the centrifugal acceleration come on tell me do we know any of the curve already very good that's transition curve right transition curve help us so that is the formula how it works so transition curve is equals to nv cube by c but remember transition curve is only half of this uh, valley curve so what we have to do is length of valley curve will be two times of nv cube by c n is deviation angle c is same as we did earlier and velocity is in meter per second next is as per the headlight side distance now why headlight side distance why not stopping side distance why not any other distance see the reason is pretty simple again So uh, this vehicle, if it is moving at daytime, so up to which distance this vehicle can see? Can I say the vehicle or the driver can see up to this distance without any problem? Correct, sir. But what happened at night? At night, the driver will only be able to see up to where the headlight will show it. Which may be this distance. So in what condition the driver is more vulnerable, daytime or night time? Night time, right? That's why we consider the headlight side distance. And headlight side distance is nothing but it is the side distance, stopping side distance at night. So in the question, they say stopping side distance is this, find out the valley curve. So they are trying to tell you the headlight side distance only. So don't worry about that. Now, same thing goes here. First, we have to assume the length of valley curve will be greater than the SSD or HSD. Then formula is this N square by 1.5.035 S. And uh, if this fails, then we go for the next one. All right, then only we go for the next one, right? This is the marathon which is going on. And now we have the second chapter from here.
so how was it i mean the first chapter was it okay uh, did you learn something okay amazing glad to see um all right so uh, we can have a break right now also or i can wait also less numerical so i've already told you i think about the numerical part that not going to happen break or continue you can please tell me if we continue i can go for another half an hour but if you want break i can go for break as well it's your choice your call what is the duration of the break by the way other faculty are giving at in like how much uh okay i'll i'll do one thing i'll have a i have a separate uh, practice session 40 minutes 45 minutes also okay we'll give 30 35 minutes that will work right but for now let's continue because majority of you wants uh, me to continue only okay what i'll do is before uh, i go to the next chapter i'll give you a quick question and i want you to answer that question for me let me see if i have a good question for you a tricky one okay let's do this one so you need to find out basically you have the speed given to you as 20 meter per second length in meter of transition curve we have to find out for radius 275 correct up to two decimal flat terrain what is it flat terrain that's it find out the length of transition curve bol please go for it uh lunch is 40 okay no problem i'll give 40 also your choice you are the one who are here to study so whatever you will say i'll go for it i always go for the majority i believe in democracy please answer quick
got it answer is 52 okay why it is not coming out Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, he's better since he's elder brother of mine only, he's quite better, and he will always remain. Uh. Anji, I think we got the answers, I suppose, right? Uh, yeah, so firstly, we need to see the value on the basis of rate of change of centrifugal acceleration, right? So we will be using the formula VQ by CR. Velocity is already given in meter per second, good for us. Um, R is given, C we need to find out 80 by 75 plus V. For that, we need to convert the velocity in kilometer per hour. So one or other way you have to find out. So how much is the value? I think 0.544 you will get. So V cube by CR. How much it is? 53.47. Meter. Moving on. Next, uh, mm, we'll go for the third only, right? Because I don't know center line or what. Flat is two point seven v square by r. So two point seven into three point six into twenty square by two seventy five. It should be fifty point eight nine. So yeah, right answer is uh, this only. Very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Now, shall I move uh, ahead for the new chapter? How's the energy, everybody? I hope it is not low. It should not be low. Come on. Energy should be high only, right? Because exam is just around the corner. Now, uh, quick, I'll, I'll go through this very quick because it's data only. So, India Road Congress has specified the dimension of any vehicle so that accordingly we can design our roads. For example, the maximum length of the maximum width of a shoulder can be uh, 2. Point, uh, sorry, the minimum value of shoulder width can be 2.5 meter. Why? Because the maximum width of any vehicle can be 2.44 meter. So, that's how they are related. That's why we need all these things. Height. Single decked vehicle 3.81 meter and double decked is 4.72 meter. As you may have seen, double decker buses, sleeper buses. So for them, the height is 4.72 as a maximum one. Now, single unit double axle, or just say this, the longest vehicle which can be possible on Indian roads is 18.29 meter. Next is passenger car unit. Now, what is a passenger car unit? It is very simple. It is uh, not equal. I would say it is similar to specific gravity. Now, what is the specific gravity? Can you please tell me, guys? What is this behavior? <clears throat> So uh, basically you are comparing anything with a standard uh, object, right? There we have water or air, right? So here what we are doing is we are comparing all the standard of other vehicles with the same standard of car or a passenger car. So it is a common practice to consider a passenger car as a standard vehicle. Like we use water as a standard liquid in uh, general. So convert other vehicle class and this is called as passenger car 
यूनिट सो बेसिकली यू आर कंपेयरिंग द डायमेंशन और कंपेयरिंग द प्रॉपर्टीज और कंपेयरिंग द कैपेसिटी और कंपेयरिंग द डेंसिटी ऑफ द कार विद एनी अदर व्हीकल इट कैन बी एनी अदर व्हीकल फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई क्विकली शो यू सो दिस इज दिस इज द टेबल एंड दिस इज ओनली फॉर द कैपेसिटी ऑफ रूरल रोड सो दिस इज ऑल्सो गिवेन एज आई आर सी सिक्सटी फोर नाइनटीन नाइनटी एज यू कैन सी मोटर व्हीकल एंड स्कूटर इज पॉइंट फाइव पैसेंजर कार इज ऑब्वियसली गोइंग टू बी वन यू आर कंपेरिंग सेम थिंग ट्रक बस थ्री ट्रक ट्रेलर फोर साइकिल पॉइंट फाइव सो दीज आर द वैल्यूज नो वट इज द क्वेश्चन दैट दे मे आस्क यू द पी सी यू वैल्यू फॉर एनी व्हीकल इज अ यूनिक वैल्यू ट्रू और फॉल्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल दी सी यू वैल्यू ऑफ साइकिल इज पॉइंट फाइव ऑलवेज लाइक इट्स अूनिक वैल्यू वट डू यू से ट्रू और फॉल्स कौन एवरीथिंग दट आई आस्क कॉन्ट बी फॉल्स क्यार थिंक ऑल राइट सो हियर इज द थिंग the psu value for any vehicle is not a unique value so statement was false why it is not unique because these values or the data is when you are comparing car with other vehicles for what for measuring the capacity of rural roads if this is not capacity of rural roads it can be maybe the density okay density on the rural roads maybe or maybe urban roads or highways or the parking space right so they are not unique values they are true for just one case which is this if you will compare the maximum speed uh, let's say you are comparing the maximum speed of all the vehicles with respect to the car they will get different values now that is pcu but for speed these are the values of psu for what capacity so they are not unique they can be different depending upon what parameter you are comparing got it something new you learn moving on fundamental element of traffic first we have traffic density now what is the traffic density the traffic density basically represents that at any particular point of time or any instant of time in 1 km stretch of a road how many vehicles are there so suppose if in this 1 km of the stretch let's say there are 20 vehicles so the density of this road will be becoming 20 vehicle per km this will be the density represented with k so traffic density represents the number of vehicle present on a specified road length it can be 1 meter 100 meter 1 kilometer anything generally specified road length is considered 1 kilometer but generally we go for 1 kilometer hence the density of the road is represented as vehicle per kilometer as already told you on a road maximum density may be observed during the traffic jam condition why because at that time can i say all the vehicles are maintaining the minimum gap between them yes as soon as a vehicle will move hardly let's say 2 cm also the vehicle which is just behind the vehicle will also move for 2 cm like they maintain minimum gap so when the gap is minimum can i say in 1 km maximum number of cars will be accommodated so that jam condition gives you the value of maximum density speed so the speed of a vehicle is nothing but the distance it can travel in a given time duration i think speed is a speed you all know what is the speed so let's not talk about speed traffic flow or traffic volume now what is the traffic flow and what is traffic volume suppose you are considering a uh, considering a road and any section you have considered now you have uh, made here you have made the uh, time constant because you are you know talking about at any given time okay here you are uh, i mean uh, here you are taking speed uh, this the the position as the constant value so at this section of road what you will see you will wait for 1 hour 
and you will see how many vehicle will cross this section in one hour. Let's say 415 vehicle crossed this section in one hour. So the traffic volume will be 415 vehicle per hour for this particular section of road. It represents the number of vehicle crossing a particular point during a specified time interval. Abhi this time can be uh, one minute, one second, one hour, one uh, day also, one week also, one month, one year, one decade, one century, anything. But generally we go for one hour. Traffic flow is usually represented as vehicle per hour, already told you. Next. Now, uh, why traffic uh, volume is important for us? It is important so that we can understand the uh, relative importance of the road, right? Why relative importance is important? Uh, why relative uh, uh, relative importance is important to understand? Because suppose there is a road made in January 2022. There is a road made in January 2023. There is a road made in uh, let's say February. 22 or uh, December 22 right like that now what you will I, I will ask you that okay for which road I have to provide uh, maintenance first I have to give them priority so you will say sir this is the oldest go for this one and then second this one third this one and fourth this one so first second third fourth like that but if I tell you that if I tell you that the traffic volume for this road is 500 vehicle per hour and if I tell you the traffic volume for this road is let's say 200 vehicle per hour and let's say for this vehicle, this particular road it is 1250 vehicle per hour and for December 1 it is uh, let's say 450 vehicle per hour. Now your priority will change. Your priority will be what? First we will go for this one, second this one, third this one, fourth this one. How I changed my priority? I changed my priority based on the relative importance. And how I got to know about the relative importance? Once I got to know about the traffic volume that these roads are having. Did you get this? Everybody. Okay. <clears throat> now how to find out the traffic volume? There are multiple ways. But one of the way from where the questions we are being asked is moving car method, riding check method, uh, floating car method, whatever you can call it. It has multiple names, moving car, riding check, floating car. So the formula is very simple. It is NA plus NY, TA plus TY. Now we need to understand NA, NY, TA, TY. What is NA, NY? What is TA, TY? So what we do here is we consider that, okay, we need to find out the traffic volume on this road. Okay, the one I have shaded. What I will do, I will consider two section, one section here, section A, one section here, section B. What I will do, I will take my test car from A to B, then I'll take a U-turn and then go from B to A. That's all I have to do. That's all. All right. Now, while doing this, there are a few things that I have to note down. And now what are those things? Let's talk about them also. So when I say, uh, any NY, TA, TY, that's what I need, right? So first, what is TY? TY is time taken by the test vehicle to travel from A to B. Okay, from here to here when it went, so how much time it took? TA, time taken by the test vehicle to travel from B to A from here to here after taking the U-turn how much time it took next is NY NY is when the vehicle is moving from A to B there must be uh, you know the vehicle must be overtaking some car and some car must be overtaking the test vehicle both the things are possible so total vehicle overtaking test vehicle minus total vehicle overtaken by test vehicle. So test vehicle will also overtake few vehicles, right? And it can be negative 
देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम इफ नेगेटिव कम्स नो प्रॉब्लम कंसिडर नेगेटिव ओनली द लास्ट थिंग इज एन ए वॉट इज एन ए सो वेन द वहीकल इज गोइंग फ्रॉम बी टू ए डिड आई से दैट द रोड फ्रॉम ए टू बी विल बी ब्लॉक्ड डिड आई एवर से दिस Tell me, have I ever mentioned about this? No. Okay, not blocked. Obviously. So when vehicle going from B to A, test vehicle, there will be vehicle which are going from A to B. Other vehicles are going from A to B. Correct. Now whatever vehicle will move from A to B, can I say my test vehicle is going to meet all of them in the middle? So when test vehicle moving B to A, number of vehicle it will meet which are going from A to B. Did you get this, everyone? Please tell me. Good. So this is how we use any and why T D Y. And if you want to find out average journey time, I'll talk about this later also. But for now, just see the formula T Y minus N Y by Q. Now remember. the accuracy of this can be improved if we increase the number of test run but remember if you increase the number of test run the cost will also be more so it is a costly process next uh, there are different ways of representing the traffic volume data you can uh, uh, represent in terms of aadt or aawt adt awt right next thing is we know what is traffic volume we know how to find traffic volume now the thing is suppose if i have measured for a particular section of road if i have measured the traffic volume value of every hour for an entire year then total number of traffic value or traffic volume value that i will be having are how many mere paas kitni value ho jayengi traffic volume ki if i am measuring entire year for every hour how many values do will do i will have 24 into 365 which is 8760 these are the number of values of traffic volume that i will be having now out of 8760 values don't write hours if i have 8760 values of traffic volume out of them which one should be the design value of traffic volume maximum one minimum one ya average what do you think all right so what we will do is uh, we will put the entire data in descending order so the highest value will come here then second highest third highest go on then the last 8760th value let's say highest value is 7210 vehicle per hour uh second highest is 7001 vehicle per hour third is 6825 vehicle per hour last value let's say it is 2 vehicle per hour minimum value i mean so if you provide uh, as per the maximum traffic volume what will happen suppose you have planned for expansion 
and uh, for expansion you are choosing this uh, uh, 7 to 1 0 so it is too much so what you will do you will give too much of the expansion to the road number of lane you will increase but it is happening for just one time in an entire year for one hour so we are basically doing this as uneconomical design if you go for the minimum one then there will be congested road and the congestion will remain there for the entire year average if you do then half of the time the road will be congested and half of the time it is going to have what free road okay so what we do as per indian road congress they said that from top choose the 30th value whatever is the 30th value this 30th value of traffic volume should be considered for designing the road or should be considered as design traffic volume okay now my question to you is if we are choosing this as my uh, design value then in an entire year total how many times the value of traffic volume will exceed the design value of the road how many times the volume will exceed the design volume total 29 times it will happen right because there are only 29 values greater than this value so we will go for 30th highest hourly volume as design value correct any doubts anyone please ask okay next is the expansion factor here also the questions are being asked in gate examination so what is expansion factor let's try to understand so basically suppose if i am having uh, the data of traffic volume of any one particular hour of the day I want traffic volume for entire day. So can I simply multiply it by 24 and I'll get the answer? Tell me yes or no. If in one hour there are 500 vehicles, can I say 500 into 24 will be the total number of vehicles in our day? No, it is not possible. Why? Because traffic volume is not same in every hour. At night, traffic volume will be very low. Daytime, maybe uh, morning and evening, it will be very high. Right, sir? So, to fight with this problem, we have got a solution, which is traffic expansion or adjustment factor. For this, as per the traffic volume, we have provided the expansion factor or adjustment factor to every hour of the day. For example, from 1 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, so from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. expansion factor is something 2 to 3 something else uh, like that. Now if you know the value of traffic volume for any particular R and you also know the expansion factor of that R then you can find out the traffic volume for entire day. So as you can see here also hourly expansion factor is equals total traffic volume for a day divided by traffic volume for a particular hour so let's take one example uh, let's take 6 to 7 pm and let's take any time which is uh, not uh, that much busy so 2 am to 3 am now first you tell me what do you think like for what for which timing the expansion factor will be more just use common sense expansion factor kis ke liye zyada hoga
okay so uh, that actually depends on uh, for which r the traffic volume will be less and for which it will be more obviously the traffic volume here will be more let's uh, take for example here the traffic volume may be 50 vehicle per hour right whereas here it will be maybe two vehicle per hour right so obviously the expansion factor here will be more and expansion factor here will be less did you get this or not and did you understood the expansion factor concept or not same goes for week if you want you know daily factor you have particular day you know you can find out for the entire week are you getting okay let's say that expansion factor uh, for a day is uh, uh, i don't know what is it but i know the traffic volume for the entire day was 100 vehicle theek hai to 100 vehicle ke according what will be the expansion factor here for this time the expansion factor is going to be what two only and what is the expansion factor for this time it will be 50 did you get this like how it is more for this time and less for this time right i hope it is clear moving on p gardley factor so now p gardley factor basically uh, tells us that how um, you can say how consistent your uh, your traffic is i mean in the peak r i'm talking about right so here what do we need is uh, we basically need uh, the peak r of the day number 1 number 2 how precisely we want to find out the things so accordingly we take the sub uh, you can say interval uh, it can be of 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes but we generally go for 15 minutes that is why we say phf 15 so phf 15 is equals to how much it will be peak hourly volume divided by 60 by 15 into peak 15 minute volume okay that's your phf 15 very simple to understand so i think i have a question do i have a question no i don't have yes i have so time interval is given from 9 to 9 itna itna se itna itna se itna itna, itna. so uh, 9 to 10 must be the peak hour right so can you please tell me the phf value here I don't know. Actually, I don't have the solution. So, firstly, what is the peak volume? How much is the peak volume, everyone? Peak hourly volume. Peak hourly volume. I'm asking about peak hourly volume. How much it is? Three thousand two hundred and eighty. Highest fifteen minute traffic, eight fifty. How much we are getting? Please answer. Point nine six, very well. So this is how we find out the values of. Uh, so point nine six is the PHF for this particular case, and you can see almost like same. 
how consistent it is can you see like almost 800 or close to 800 the value is right that's why you are getting more uh, answer more close to one only okay let's see what we have next Next is headway. I think we already talked about headway, but I did not tell you how to find out the headway. So I'll uh, first tell you what is uh, headway, right? Uh, yeah, actually I told you the space headway. This is time headway. So uh, what is the time headway? So time headway is basically, suppose there is a road and there is a section and uh, let's say at T1 time, a vehicle cross the section and immediately after that at t2 time another vehicle cross the section so what is the time gap between these two can i say the time gap between is t2 minus t1 only correct sir so this is the basically what time headway what is this this is time headway represented by ht it is corresponding to the time between two successive vehicle as they pass at a given point and on the highway right so that's what your uh, time basically is time gap is basically the time headway ht okay this is one thing next is right okay one more thing suppose if you know the time headway right can you find out total number of vehicle cross this section in one hour if i know that okay average value or minimum time headway is this much so what must be the maximum number of vehicle that can cross through this section if you know minimum time headway in one hour that can be found out right q max or you can also call it the capacity it will be how much so total time you are having is 3600 seconds and uh, the time gap between two successive vehicle is ht minimum so this is how you can find out it's very simple correct okay next is uh, i think space headway so let's talk about that this is important please understand you will be confused 110 percent and you are already confused by the way i will ask you a question and you will also see that yes this sometimes confuse students right now the what is space headway space headway is distance from head to head of these vehicle now this includes this distance which is the spacing or clear gap and the length of the vehicle right so uh, this distance is nothing but ssd only so space headway is ssd plus l or v times tr plus v square by 2gf plus l but now both the vehicles are moving in same direction correct both the vehicles are moving at same velocity that's why they are maintaining the gap now if this vehicle applies the brake and this vehicle also applies the brake can we say the brake distance covered by both of them is same yes or no yes correct it can be from rear to rear bumper. Yes, then it will be called, called as tail way, space tail way. Generally, we go for head to head. That won't make any problem for us. Right, sir? So, since they both will be covering same distance, will it change anything between them? I mean, I'm standing here. There's a person in front of me who is also looking there. We both are having two meter of gap. He moves one step ahead. I also moves one step ahead. Now the distance between both of us is same or different. If we have moved with the same length of step. Same only right. Same thing goes here also. So that is the break distance is being neglected. So space headway becomes how much? And also, uh, since this vehicle driver, can I say it will be already attentive because there is a vehicle moving in front of it that it may have to apply the brake at any point of time. That is why instead of 2.5 seconds, it will take 0.7 seconds. And this is your formula of space headway. Right, sir. But if, if, if 
the reaction time in the question is giving to you as 2.5 then don't use this then you have to go for this formula where you have to find out everything i mean entire ssd you have to find out you won't neglect this and l also you have to add so this will be there if the value of uh, reaction time is given to you as 2.5 seconds okay so this is a space headway all right then okay now suppose if we know the space headway can we also find out the density v is in kilometer per okay i think you joined late so guys please tell me uh, v is in meter per second or kilometer per hour those who are watching the session from the beginning that is in meter per second right so now uh, if you know the distance between two successive car you can say in one kilometer which is 1000 meter just divide it by s and you will find out the density also now if we talk about capacity capacity is the maximum traffic volume that can be accommodated by any road uh, so now there are three type of capacity basic capacity possible capacity practical capacity so the basic capacity is <clears throat> the maximum number of vehicle that can pass a given point on a lane or road during one hour under ideal roadway condition means uh, the ideal condition is going on and at that ideal condition whatever the traffic volume you are achieving the maximum traffic volume that you are achieving in ideal conditions no traffic jam nothing everything is open for you then that particular traffic volume maximum traffic volume will be called as basic capacity possible if you are having uh just you know <clears throat> Uh, similar condition there is no ideal condition but regular conditions there is nothing different uh, you know everything wherever you are uh, getting jam you are getting the traffic jam it's a regular day so in that condition the maximum traffic volume that you will note it will be called as the possible capacity possible capacity is maximum number of vehicle pass through a given point one are under prevailing road and traffic condition. Prevailing means which remains like that only, right? Nothing new. Now, if we find out the maximum traffic volume in the worst condition, pessimistic approach if we are taking means there is unreasonable delay, hazard, restriction to driver freedom to maneuver under prevailing roadway and traffic condition this particular condition at this particular condition if somehow you are finding out the maximum traffic volume then that will be called as practical capacity and practical capacity is also known as design capacity okay so we are designing for worst case possible did you get it everybody Now we know traffic volume is nothing but velocity into density. Uh, okay, so we can say maximum volume is how much? K is 1000 by S. Just now we saw into V. So this is the capacity. This is basically theoretical capacity. Theoretical way of finding out the capacity. Simple, right? So C is the capacity of single lane. V is the speed in kilometer per hour. S is the space headway as we have already talked about in the earlier cases okay should i continue or uh, a break is required i think we can take a break okay so uh, let's take a break of how much time please uh, vote for the time Everybody, please vote. Mm. 
फोर्टी मिनट्स ओके सर टू थर्टी राइट करेक्ट चलो अल सी यू आफ्टर द ब्रेक नाउ वट एवर क्वेश्चन यू हैव प्लीज आस्क आफ्टर दैट
<clears throat> Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, please uh, share the session so that uh, everybody knows that we are live again. Confirm the audio and video. Okay, please share the session and once it's done, I'll start the class. So, had your lunch, right? I'll wait for one more minute. Let everybody join. Okay. Right. So this is a simple topic. So I can start if someone misses this, just watch the recorded form. So now we'll talk about uh, the different type of speed. Here we have uh, sport speed, running speed, overall travel speed, sport speed, and these are studies by the way. So basically three speeds are there. Now, what is the sport speed? Sport speed is basically the speed of any vehicle at particular instant, right? Suppose if I'm driving and you are sitting next to me in my car and you just randomly ask, sir, what is the speed of the car? I'll see and I'll tell you what the speed is exactly at that particular moment. So that, but if you are talking about a particular moment, then that becomes your sport speed. Now, tell me quickly that, uh, but don't tell me, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, if you have noticed that sometime on highways, you can see there is a speed measurement device. Yes or no? Have you ever seen them? <coughs> Excuse me. Have you ever seen them? Right. So you can see the speed are uh, being uh, shown to you. Right. So uh, that particular speed is uh, spot speed. Right. Now, what is the running speed? So to understand the running speed, I'll take one example. Let's say you are going from Agra to Noida. For any city from A to N. Let's say this distance is 100 km per hour. Right. You are traveling, you have started traveling from here. And uh, let's say you, you traveled for, uh, let's say one hour. Then you took a break here of 30 minutes. Then again, you traveled for one hour. Right. So if I talk about the running speed in running speed, you have to remove all the time, which is considered as a delay or as a break. So here the running time. Running time is how much two hours only. So if you have the time, you have the distance. Can you find out the speed from here? 50 kmph, I think, right? This is your running speed. Now, what is the overall speed? Overall speed is 100 divided by 2.5. Means you are considering the delay and brakes as well. So that becomes your speed, which is overall speed. Right. Now there are two types of studies that can be seen for uh, is, uh, this uh, speed study. So one is the spot speed and other is the speed and delay. Now let's talk about the spot speed. So in spot speed, first let's find out how to actually measure the spot speed. Right. So to measure, guys, can you please share the session? Like I'm just... Uh, with a bad throat, I'm teaching, so I at least need students to watch, right? Very well. Now, <laughs> how to find out the spot speed? What you can do is you can consider a section here and a section here and make sure that the section is, let's say, 50 meter away from each other. 
you are having an observer here and here you have a device anoscope in which this side is open this side is open and there is a mirror at 45 degrees placed over here this is the mirror basically so now what happened is this observer is having a stopwatch any vehicle crosses this section the observer will start the watch and as soon as it starts the watch it starts looking into this mirror because when this vehicle will cross this section its image will come in this mirror and that image can be seen by the observer once the observer sees the image of the car in this anoscope he is going to stop the time whatever time he is going to see that is the time which vehicle took to travel from this section to this section so let's say if that uh, uh, let's say that time is uh, five seconds right so what is the speed over here so this becomes your 10 meter per second becomes your spot speed so this is how we find out the spot speed there are other ways also to find out the spot speed like graphic recorder electronic meter photoelectric meter radar speed meter and photographic methods so they are different you just have to know the name nothing in detail for gate exam next is the speed distribution curve so this 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 particular curve is uh, showing you nothing but cumulative speed okay now it is a cumulative speed distribution curve so uh, if i just uh, try to show you um, let's say 30 this so it is trying to tell you that 30 percent vehicle okay 30 percent vehicle are moving at at or less than this speed maybe 38 kilometer per hour it will be i don't know exact value how much it has to be right now here i am interested in three values one is 98th speed corresponding to 98 85th 15th speed corresponding to 98th percentile is your design speed Eighty fifth is maximum speed. Fifteenth is minimum speed. Okay, so this is how you can find out the different speed as per the given graph. Next, next is the speed and delay study. Now, what is the job of speed and delay study? So the job is very simple it has to find out the spot of congestion i mean where there is a congestion on the road okay what is the reason behind the congestion and how i can improve this congestion so these three things has to be covered in this speed and delay study now there are different methods of uh, you know uh, having a speed and delay study they are floating car or riding check method i hope you remember this method from the first half of the session second is interview technique you just ask people about uh, you know daily when they move from their home to their regular places so where do they find the congestion what is the reason they think the, uh, the reason of the congestion can be elevated observation and photographic technique so four methods are there now in this uh, speed and delay study we another thing that we can have is the origin and destination study now what is origin and destination study so o and d uh, studies basically provide us the data of actual direction of travel and selection of route and length of trips that's what they do so origin and destination basically provide us the desire lines now what are desire lines desire lines are something like this so they are a straight line remember desire line can never be curved it will always be straight so we have different different facilities and the line which are joining them are basically desire line now if you will notice closely the width of the line is different why because the width of all the desire line are proportional to the number of round trips in that particular or between those particular facilities can you tell me by looking at this diagram between which facilities 
मैक्सिमम ट्रैवल इज हैपनिंग वन टू टू ब्रिलियंट अरविंद अनुभव ब्रिलियंट ओके सो हाउ वी गॉट टू नो दिस विद द हेल्प ऑफ द विथ सो दिस इज हाउ इट टेल्स सो द विथ ऑफ सर डिजायर लाइन ड्रॉन प्रपोर्शनल टू द ट्रेल्स इन बोथ डायरेक्शन रिटर्न मीन्स दिस ओनली राइट so this actually help us in planning new highway facility and improving those which are existing so i know that there is too much uh, traffic between facility 1 2 and 5 so i can plan new highway or maybe a new uh, or existing uh, uh, plan can be improved like how to collect o and d data either you go for roadside interview you can have a license plate method written postcard method tag on car method or home interview can also be done now uh, what method you have to choose it actually depend on the situation to situation right okay next is space mean speed and time mean speed so remember this they both are the mean value of the spot speed only right they are nothing but the spot speed only i mean the average of spot speed only but how they are different from each other actually uh, the way we are collecting the data of spot speed is different that's why the name is different i'll tell you how so suppose if you are considering the spot speed of you know, so average spot speed of group of vehicle over a specified road stretch at any particular time suppose i am considering this stretch of road and let's say here i have 10 vehicle vehicle 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 vehicle vehicle okay vehicle number one, having some velocity second having some velocity third having some velocity different velocities right so here i will put 10 and 1 by velocity of vehicle 1 velocity of vehicle 2 velocity of vehicle 3. so what i did is i considered a stretch of road and whatever vehicles are there in that road what i am doing is i am taking the average of all the spot speed of these vehicles now this is because we are considering the space here so that is why called as space mean speed if if you do this uh, instead of considering the space what do you do select a section and just take any any specified time let's say for 2 hours consider for 2 hours in 2 hours let's say 10 vehicle crossed this section with 10 different velocities v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 like something like that so the average that you will find with the help of these spot speed will be called as time mean speed did you get the difference between these two or not please tell me that first <clears throat> did you understand the difference or not okay uh remember one more thing that space mean speed in nature is harmonic and time mean speed in nature is arithmetic mathematically arithmetic mean will always be greater or maybe equal to the harmonic mean so if speed of all the vehicle is same guys if the speed of all the vehicle is same then what is going to be the condition condition is very simple doesn't matter what you are trying to find maybe uh, speed of all the vehicle if they are same so time mean speed will become equals to space mean speed got it any doubts which is most reliable what do you think which one is more reliable i have told you there is harmonic this is arithmetic this is the relationship 
Anyone? Which one is more reliable? What do you think? Why? Why space? Okay, so uh, let's think this the other way. <clears throat> All right, I need the value of the average speed for any purpose. Okay, it can be any purpose. Now, suppose if I consider higher value, okay, of the velocity that is better or if I consider the lower value or less value, that is better. For example, if I have to, you know, design a road, let's say just example. Okay. We don't use this uh, for uh, road design, but just example. I have to provide uh, either 60 kmph as the design speed, or I can provide 55 kmph as the design speed, which one I should prefer. Accordingly, I have to design things then. I know people are moving on this road at 55 km per hour. So should I design it for 55 or should I go for 60 kmph? Higher value, lower value of speed. Mere bhai, higher value choose karoge na yaar, kam kyo karne aapko? So, because we are talking about speed here, that is why we'll go for time in speed because it is going to give us more result always in comparison to space one. So, to say that, okay, uh, which one is reliable, this one is reliable, it is not possible to say. As per my requirement, I will choose it. So, if somewhere the design need higher value, I'll go for time in speed. If I want to keep a conservative approach, then we'll go for the second one. Safety criteria to fulfill nahi hoga. Dubara se sochna, fir jawab dena, then you will get the answer. Khud se aajayega. Mujhe batane ki zaroot hi nahi padegi. Socho, jo maine bola, aur fir aapne jo mujhe bola, usko sochna. Thik hai? You will get the answer. I know you are smart. Next question. I mean, next concept is vehicle arrival model. So here uh, we have a negative exponential distribution and uh, we have also the Poisson distribution. So Poisson distribution is the one which is being asked very frequently in the examination. So we'll see both of them, right? I'm just telling you that, okay, this one is being asked very frequently. So here basically it is nothing but not a concept, even not a concept of highway engineering. This is mathematics. So we are finding out the probability. So uh, either you go for the exponential distribution or poison. Mostly they will give you what uh, you need to use. Suppose if you want to find out the probability that time headway will be greater than or equals to certain value, right? Accordingly, you can choose the distribution. For example, here, the function that we use for exponential distribution is lambda e raised to the power minus lambda t. Here, lambda is vehicle arrival rate. Vehicle, how many vehicle are coming? Uh, per second or per minute depending upon what time you are having right so if time is in seconds then obviously you will go for vehicle per seconds then only they both will multiply together here in the power all right so if you see what is the probability that the time headway will be greater than zero and less than infinity can you tell me everybody what is the probability that time headway will be greater than zero less than infinity <clears throat> so the probability of time headway to be greater than zero less than infinity so that has to be one right 100 percent it will be greater than zero and less than infinity so as you can see, uh, we have to put the range from zero to infinity, zero to infinity and lambda e to the power minus lambda t 
dt right so lambda constant comes outside e raised to the power minus lambda t so when you integrate this you get the value as lambda e raised to the power minus lambda t by minus lambda all right so put the limits here lambda lambda cancelled out it will be minus so this comes out as one only so this is how it works right if we talk about the Poisson distribution, so this is the function that we use lambda t raised to the power n e raised to the power minus lambda t by n factorial. Nothing to tell over here. I think prob this is the probability that n number of vehicle will cross the section in t time. If you want to, uh, if you want to find out the probability that n number of vehicle will cross the section in t time, then this is how you are going to do it with the help of this function, which is given to you all right then we have the macroscopic characteristics so speed density traffic volume uh, they are macroscopic characteristics of traffic flow only various traffic model give the relationship between speed density like green shield greenberg underwood gm uh, pipe gibbs so these are all the different methods we don't study all of them for us the most important is the green shield Right. I can also talk about Greenberg, right? Uh, if you want, I mean, it is not important, but yeah, it's similar. So we can talk. So uh, what does the green shield distribution tell us? Green shield distribution basically tell us about uh, firstly, one thing, it gives us the relationship between the density, right? It gives us the relationship between the volume. It also gives us the relationship between the velocity. All three are connected here. Remember this green shield has considered the variation between the density and the speed as linear. So I'll explain you this curve. So this curve basically says that when the velocity will be zero, that means we are talking about a jam condition. When there is a jam condition, what happened? Velocity is negligible or zero. So in jam condition, what happened with the density? Is it maximum or is it zero? It will be maximum. Very good. So maximum density will be called as the jam density. So at V0, K is Kj. Next. When velocity is maximum, there is no restriction to the movement of the car. That time, what do you think? What will be the gap between the vehicle? Whether the gap will be maximum or the gap will be minimum. The gap will be the gap will be maximum, right? So when the gap is maximum, can I say in a stretch of a road, let's say a kilometer stretch, can I say that time I'll be having minimum number of vehicle or negligible number of vehicle. Correct. So that is why we consider that when the velocity is maximum at that time, the density is almost zero. So at V equals to VSF, k is 0. Get it? Got it? This is the relationship, linear relationship. So time head way graph explain kar do. Time head way ka kaun sa graph hai? Saturation wala. The probability when at least two vehicle in 30 minute with three vehicle. Two, at least wala jab bhi aayega, wahan pe one minus probability of two vehicle karna hai. ओके okay, तो सैचुरेशन वाला अभी आगे बताऊंगा जब अपना ही आएगा क्या आएगा वेबस्टर मेथड आएगा उसमें यूज करते हैं हम चलो यहां तक सेट है तो अगर यहां तक सेट है तो आपको बस कुछ नहीं फाइनल इक्वेशन बता देता हूं मैं तो रिलेशनशिप इन्होंने जो दिया है द रिलेशनशिप इज v is equals to vsf 1 minus k by kj. 
ठीक है नाउ फॉर क्यू टू बी क्यू मैक्स के शुड बी के जे बाय टू एंड वी शुड बी वी एस एफ बाय टू देर फोर क्यू मैक्स विल बी के जे इन टू वी एस एफ बाय फोर सो दिस इज एज पर द ग्रीन शील्ड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन राइट नाउ द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन वॉल्यूम वेलोसिटी वॉल्यूम डेंसिटी नाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू बी इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एस बिकॉज क्वेश्चन वॉज आज इन प्रीवियस ईयर प्लीज सी वेन वेलोसिटी इज जीरो वॉट विल हैपन टू द ट्रैफिक वॉल्यूम बताइए टी थर्टी मिनट लेंगे तब आंसर नहीं आता है प्लीज सर आप मुझे वो बताओ भाई कल अराइवल रेट प्लीज टेल मी इफ वेलोसिटी जीरो व्हाट इज द ट्रैफिक वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम में जाम कब से आ गया सर वाह बहुत बढ़िया so basically you are saying that this is the section and vehicle is here having velocity zero so you are saying traffic volume will be maximum is it possible ha huh? question mein three teen vehicle kitna 30 minute mein bola hai kya kya likha hai question pura likho ek bar mein pehle to If velocity is zero, then traffic volume is also zero. No vehicle is crossing the section. Did you get it? Good. So you can see here velocity zero, volume also zero. Understood? Okay. Next. <clears throat> when velocity is maximum what will happen to traffic volume maximum or minimum if velocity is maximum traffic volume is maximum or minimum the volume will be negligible why because when velocity is maximum vehicle maintain more gap and when the gap is more then obviously time headway will be more more is the time headway less is the traffic volume so for maximum value you will get maximum value of time headway for which you will get minimum value of traffic volume which is negligible or zero so again for velocity equals to vsf volume is zero so the variation between the velocity and volume actually goes something like this and if you try to see the maximum volume which is this so it is coming when v is equals to vsf by 2 got it similarly for density when density zero traffic volume zero correct or not if not if do, you did not understood you can use the velocity reference so when density is zero what is the velocity maximum minimum maximum minimum maximum so when velocity is maximum what is traffic volume
आंसर नेग्लिजिबल दैट्स वाई जीरो नाउ सिमिलरली व्हेन डेंसिटी इज मैक्सिमम व्हाट विल हैपन टू द ट्रैफिक वॉल्यूम जीरो सो दैट्स वाई अगेन जीरो right sir so now as you can see again the variation is something like this so maximum traffic volume will be attained at the density kj by 2 i hope it is clear so uh, there was a question in the previous year which was something like this It was something like this. Here it was velocity. Here there was density. Here there was u. Here there was again velocity. So uh, I think they they provided you these values. They asked you a b c something like this. Is that agar kuch to question tha? and there was a relationship between that you have to find out as uh, between ka kb kc something like that was the question that ka is greater than kb is greater than kc something like that like different variations were given so how to solve this it is very simple to solve you just have to see this that corresponding to this what is the value of k this is the value of k corresponding to this what is the value of k this is the value of k corresponding to this this is the value of k so you can compare okay k a k b k c this is how you can compare and give the answer so that is the reason why these graphs are important for you right okay moving on sir too much syllabus is left let me finish then you can ask whatever doubts you have please don't write same thing multiple times complete this i will tell you whatever doubt you have inverse order reverse order whatever it is just don't write again and again okay so this was green shield then we have greenberg in uh, greenberg things are pretty different uh, by the way it is clear all that graph and everything is clear or not because multiple questions are being asked from these particular topics tell me all right moving on to the next thing just a minute be kya ya ya okay moving on all right okay 3d figure wala graph bata dijiye sir ye kya tarika hai puchne ka topic bataiye what topic relationship between k q v and sir mujhe bhi nahi aata ye to 3d ka matlab ना मुझे आता है ना मैंने पढ़ाया किसी को पांच साल से थ्री डी ग्राफ सर दिलीप का क्वेश्चन एक्सप्लेन जज वज मत बनो यार अभी किसी के वकील वकील खैर छोड़ो टाइम क्यों वेस्ट करो मैं 
एनीवे सो द ग्रीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज बेसिकली वी वी एस एफ एल एन हेयर वी हैव लोगोरिथमिक रिलेशनशिप नॉट लीनियर राइट एंड देर इज वन मोर व्हिच इज एक्सपोनेंशियल हेयर वी हैव द एक्सपोनेंशियल रिलेशनशिप्स राइट ओके द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज एक्सीडेंट स्टडी सो एक्सीडेंट स्टडी इज देयर और नॉट इन द सिलेबस एक्सीडेंट स्टडी इज देयर इन द सिलेबस और नॉट जस्ट प्लीज कंफर्म सर उसको बोला है हमने क्वेश्चन एक बार वो लिख देगा तो मैं बता दूंगा नहीं सिलेबस में पार्किंग आई थिंक पार्किंग भी नहीं होगा पार्किंग पार्किंग हो तो जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट दिस दिस इज डायरेक्ट वैल्यूज देर इज नथिंग टू एक्सप्लेन यर ओके नेक्स्ट इज पोटेंशियल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट पॉइंट सो हेयर वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट व्हाट आर द नंबर ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट पॉइंट्स दैट मे बी देयर ऑन अ इंटरसेक्शन सो दिस इज द केस ऑफ टू लेन टू वे रोड सो लेट्स सी हाउ मेनी हाउ मेनी कॉन्फ्लिक्ट पॉइंट्स वी कैन हैव राइट सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड so to understand this what you can do is you can just give the name to these lanes this is lane 1 this is lane 2 lane 3 and lane 4 so first it is very easy to make the uh, whole chart what you can do is first make all the left hand movements for lane 1 this is the left hand movement lane 2 this is the first uh, i mean this is the left hand movement for lane two it's in right for three finally for the fourth one so these are the left hand movements okay <clears throat> now let's make the right hand movements for all of them for one for 2 for 3 and for the fourth lane okay so we have made, uh, we have made all the possible uh, ways or all the possible movements that are there so now let's understand how many major and minor conflict points are there so if we talk about the minor conflict points so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 7 so 8 minor points are there what about the major major are all those where crossing is happening can you please tell me total how many major are there how many major conflict points are there so 1 Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen, total twenty-four. Right. So you don't have to <coughs> do this for every uh, case. This is how you can remember. Like. If uh, road A is two lane, road B is two lane. 
बोथ रोड आर टू वे देन ट्वेंटी फोर इज द पोटेंशियल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट पॉइंट वन रोड इज वन वे अदर रोड इज टू वे देन इलेवन बोथ रोड आर वन वे देन सिक्स विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ नंबर ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट आर द ट्राफिक कंट्रोल डिवाइसेज इन विच द फर्स्ट थिंग इज द साइन बोर्ड नाउ लेट सी वट आर द साइन बोर्ड वी हैव थ्री कैटेगरीज ऑफ साइन बोर्ड नंबर वन मैंडेटरी साइन बोर्ड सो दीज आर दो साइन बोर्ड इफ यू डोंट फॉलो दैम यू हैव टू पे फाइन दीज आर मैंडेटरी दीज आर रेगुलेटरी साइन नॉन कंप्लायस ऑफ विच इज एन ऑफेंस द साइज शेप एंड डिटेल ऑफ द साइन हैव बीन स्टैंडर्डाइज बाई इंडियन रोड कांग्रेस Mandatory sign boards provided with white background with red boundary, 60 centimeter dia plate, 2.8 meter height from the ground to center of the circular plate. These are a few examples of mandatory sign boards. No honking, speed limit, weight limit, no parking, no overtaking. These are the mandatory sign boards. Next, cautionary sign boards. In cautionary sign boards, if you don't follow them, there is a possibility of accident, but there will be no fine that you have to pay. <clears throat> so these signs warn you about the hazardous or extraordinary conditions ahead of the road, and uh, they are basically a uh, equilateral triangle in shape, having the size of forty-five centimeter. So equilateral means forty-five, forty-five, forty-five. so examples are sharp left turn ahead down gradient ahead then we have narrow road ahead bump ahead or speed breaker ahead school ahead and cross section ahead or intersection ahead next are informatory sign boards they just give you information right there is uh, no warning there is no info uh, there is no regulations just informations something like parking रेस्ट्रॉ फ्यूल पंप और मे बी डिस्टेंसेज सो दिस इज वॉट इन्फॉर्मेटरी साइन बोर्ड डू इन द मैंडेटरी साइन बोर्ड देर आर टू एक्सेप्शन ऑल्सो दे आर गिव वे एंड स्टॉप साइन नाउ दीज टू साइन बोर्ड रिक्वायर मोर अटेंशन दैट इज द रीजन वाई द शेप इज डिफरेंट इनवर्टेड ट्राइंगल एंड ऑक्टागोनल शेप All right. Next is the traffic signal. Till now, all set. Everyone. Okay. All right. Now, uh, in traffic signal, um, what do we have? So there may be three type of signals: uh, traffic control signal, which actually controls and regulate the vehicle's movement; pedestrian for the people who are on their uh, foot, or uh, basically they are moving, right? Not in a vehicle, but pedestrians; and special wherever you know some uh, special attention is required, maybe during checking or uh, anything like that now what is the advantage of traffic signal number 1 it provide orderly movement of the traffic at the intersection right so that is the one thing that uh, everything can be regulated reduction in accident due to crossing conflict notably right hand angle collision so in india as you know right hand is difficult to turn right whenever you are on intersection so this help us to reduce the chances of collision traffic handling capacity is highest among different type of intersection uh, at grades so wherever you see uh, you know different control sections like rotary uh, and traffic signal is having the highest efficiency or highest capacity not efficiency highest capacity to hold the traffic <coughs> provide a chance to a traffic of minor road to cross the continuous traffic flow the main road at reasonable interval of time suppose there is a national highway going on through a city sometime what happen it goes or maybe arterial street is going now arterial street uh, with arterial street there is a collector street which is uh, intersecting 
Now what will happen because the traffic is too much on arterial the people on collective street they are not able to cross the road but if you install the traffic signal then they both get the equal chance to cross the road pedestrian can cross the road safely at signalized intersection good for pedestrians as well next disadvantage is rear end collision may increase suddenly if you see the red light has turned i mean the uh, yeah if the red light has turned and uh, up you apply the brake there is a high possibility of high uh, rear end collision improper design and location of signal may lead to violation of control system so if the design is not good or maybe installation is uh, there is in is, uh, is such a way that uh, is in such a way that the light is not visible to you okay so in that case also it is going to be disadvantages for us the variation in vehicle arrival on approach road may cause increase in waiting time on one road suppose you have provided same duration of green light on arterial street and same amount of green light time on the collector street now what will happen traffic is more on arterial and less on collector but they are getting same time to cross the intersection right so in this case the time of arterial street users is wasted excessive delay of vehicle <clears throat> driver may be induced to use less adequate and less safe routes <clears throat> now you know that okay the there will be too much traffic on road because of the signal so i'll just choose uh, you know any other road which is not safe for the user okay now there are different type of uh, now there are different type of uh, signals also as per their programming so just give me a minute i'll explain this Yeah, so uh, there is a fixed uh, interval and this should be fixed vehicle actuated semi vehicle actuated now fixed uh, interval doesn't uh, care about what is the traffic condition number of vehicles standing in a queue nothing fixed interval means the green light will turn on for a certain period of time and it will it will uh, throughout the day throughout the month throughout the year will turn on for same period of time doesn't matter if traffic is low doesn't matter if the traffic is higher <clears throat> so fixed time interval means simple construction relatively inexpensive inexpensive uh, inflexible hence may cause delay and require careful 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 you know, it should be regulation i mean regulation has to be done by manually also most successfully used in linked system requiring a fixed cycle length of a given pattern and speed of progression so basically uh, i will talk about uh, this uh, linked system also that how the traffic signal are linked with each other on a same road so it is good for these type of uh, linked system as well now vehicle actuated they are very flexible they can change their duration of green time red time as per the traffic and are able to adjust to the changing traffic condition automatically require costly equipment such as detector and sophisticated controllers now these are semi vehicle actuated mixture of these two delay is held to minimum and maximum capacity is achieved useful for junction of side street having low traffic volume with a main street having heavy flow as i given you the example of arterial and collector cannot provide signal coordination <clears throat> they are believed to cause high accident rate at time of light traffic <coughs> now there are two type of interval one is change interval and other is clearance interval so change interval is nothing but the gap between the green light and the red light uh, and that gap is that gap when amber light or yellow light turns on so that is also called as amber time 
नेक्स्ट इज क्लियरेंस इंटरवल नाउ क्लियरेंस इंटरवल इज वॉट सपोज वी आर हैविंग एन इंटरसेक्शन नाउ हियर let's say this road is having a red light so all the vehicles are standing and this is having a green light now suppose a vehicle <coughs> reached here <coughs> and at that exact moment this road shows green light and this road shows red now suddenly this vehicle will move ahead and this vehicle is obviously moving in this direction so there is a possibility that they will collide so to avoid such situation what we do when the red light of this road here we had green light right so when this green light of this road turns red this red light remains red for certain duration 2 seconds 3 second 1 second and after the gap of 1 or 2 or 3 second it turns green so what we can say is for a particular time duration the entire intersection is having the red light no road is having the green light and that duration for which entire intersection is having the red light is called as clearance interval all or you can call it all red time this is done so that we can clear this zone before the traffic of other road is permitted to go ahead doubt anything <laughs> everything clear by now moving on so amber time okay so if you want to find the amber time it's very simple to find basically let's say that uh, this is the <coughs> ssd means if anyone have made the decision to stop the vehicle uh, and that vehicle is beyond this line it can stop because it has the available ssd but if someone is here and decides to stop vehicle it cannot stop before this line right that's what ssd means so you know what is ssd i don't have to tell you again and again now here uh, those vehicle which are here okay as soon as they see the green light has turned amber they know now the red light will come so they will easily stop their vehicle before this line but the vehicle let's take the critical value the vehicle which is here when they see the amber light is on now they don't have the choice to stop they have to cross the section so how much distance they have to cover they have to cover this distance which is ssd they have to cover this distance width of road and then they have to cover their own length as well so how to find out the time required to cross this section is ssd plus w plus l divided by the velocity and this is how much time should be given as a amber time so that the vehicle at least who are here can cross the section before the red light comes time lost so there are two type of uh, time lost which are um, starting lost time and clearance lost time let's understand okay first starting lost time <clears throat> so it is having a red light red light okay now as soon as this red light turns green this vehicle will take some time to cross or to start the engine or to accelerate or to cross the intersection but as soon as the green light was on the driver was supposed to cross the intersection 
or starts to move at least but it is a human not a robot right that as soon as the green light will turn on this will start no it takes some time to react so the time duration for which the vehicle were allowed to cross the intersection but that time this number one vehicle was taking time to react to the situation so that duration is lost so that is actually called as starting lost time and uh, the other one is clearance lost time yeah now let's say the clearance lost time what is the clearance lost time here what happen is that a vehicle is coming from here there is a green light right now and then it turns amber now the vehicle knows at any time this light will be red so this vehicle stops here when he stops here at that time also when he stops here at that time also the yellow light was turned on okay and when the yellow light is turned on it is allowed to move yes or no vehicle is allowed to move but it is not moving so what happen is that it has lost that much of time and that is called as clearance loss time so when the signal turns from red to green driver standing near intersection take some time so this is startup loss time startup loss time initial green time is lost and clearance loss time final amber time is lost amber time is lost okay all red time i have discussed already okay now uh, green <coughs> excuse me next is saturation flow or green ratio whatever so let me talk about the saturation flow let's say there is a red light and the vehicles are standing in a queue okay now when the green light will turn on please i need your attention everybody when the green light will turn on what will happen first vehicle will cross the section then second vehicle will cross the section can you tell me the velocity of first vehicle and velocity of second vehicle if i compare who will cross this section with more velocity obviously second one right because it has more distance to accelerate than the first vehicle right so second one will cross one okay can i say the third vehicle will cross even faster and fourth faster than this then this one faster than this this one faster than this yes or no right okay after so uh, is the speed will keep on increasing or will it become stagnant at any velocity become constant at what velocity at what velocity at 
सेचुरेशन वेलोसिटी क्या होता है डिजाइन स्पीड राइट मैक्सिमम इट कैन गो अप टू डिजाइन स्पीड उसके बाद की कुछ नहीं है ओके दैट वॉज नॉट द क्वेश्चन नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज इफ द टाइम हेडवे बिटवीन दीज टू इज एच टी वन टाइम हेडवे बिटवीन दीज टू इज एच टी टू तो टेल मी विच वन इज स्मॉलर एस टी टू विल बी स्मॉलर सिमिलरली एस टी थ्री लाइक दिस सो द वेरिएशन ऑफ टाइम हेडवे इफ आई ड्रॉ हियर दिस इज वॉट आई विल सी इट विल रिड्यूस एंड विल बिकम कॉन्स्टेंट एट अट अ पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सैचुरेशन हेडवे okay and if you use this in the formula 3600 by this what you will get what do you will get saturation capacity ओके नाउ वी हैव डिफरेंट मेथड ऑफ सिग्नल डिजाइन ट्रायल अप्रॉक्स वेबस्टर डिजाइन एज पर आईआरसी बट लकीली वी है जस्ट हैव टू स्टडी वन व्हिच इज वेबस्टर मेथड बिकॉज इट इज ओनली देयर इन द सिलेबस ऑफ गेट सो वेबस्टर मेथड यूजेज सैचुरेशन वॉल्यूम और जस्ट नाउ दैट वी हैव सीन सैचुरेटेड फ्लो सैचुरेशन कैपेसिटी एंड नॉर्मल फ्लो राइट द फॉर्मुला इज प्रोटी सिंपल वन पॉइंट फाइव एल प्लस फाइव अपॉन वन माइनस वाई हेयर एल इज द टाइम लॉस्ट इन वन साइकिल राइट विच इज इक्वल्स टू टू एन प्लस आर See, two we are considering as the loss per phase, and n is number of phase. If instead of two anything is given, please go for that. If nothing is given, then use two only. If it says four second is the loss per phase, then go for four n. Something like that. What is y? y is basically ratio of normal flow to saturation flow of the road this okay now a question i'll give you let me see if i have a question All right. So a signal is uh, installed uh, at north south east west intersection. Total cycle length is three twenty eight seconds. Find all red all red time. okay so north south east west normal and saturated values 1500 900 1000 1500 1500 
I I please solve <clears throat> kindly get me the answer all red time ओके सो वन आंसर ऑफ गॉड आज फोर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव थ्री करेक्ट है अदर्स वॉट एपन ओनली वन और टू पीपल आर आई थिंक एक्टिव रेस्ट तो मूवी इज गोइंग ऑन Okay, so first of all, we need to find out the value of uh, y. Let's find out the value of y. How much is the value of y? Take the you know maximum value, so fifteen. L eighteen point five three. 
I think it's given so we'll consider two phase. Got it? Any doubts? <clears throat> okay next is okay this concept now see we know that there is amber light there is green light red light but uh, for this concept we will consider only two green red green red green red no amber amber i'm including in green only so uh from here to here red light is on from here to here green light then red then green red green something like that okay now this is a cumulative arrival curve why it is random because the vehicle they are going to arrive on the intersection randomly correct or not everybody they will come on the intersection randomly there is no fixed pattern okay so now when the vehicles are coming when the red light is on so are they crossing the intersection or they are accumulating on the intersection in a queue they are making a queue right so during this time all the vehicles they are making queue only And now as soon as the green light will turn on what will happen they all will start to move so i'm going to draw the cumulative departure curve so this is the departure this now as you see that after the green light again the red light turned on right but here can you see arrival and departure departure and arrival arrival and departure they are meeting at a point what does this signifies this signifies that all the vehicles which came during the red light on the intersection they all were able to cross the intersection in the given green time. If 10 vehicle arrived on the intersection during red time, then during the green time, all 10 of them crossed the section. As soon as the 10th vehicle of the row crossed the intersection, the red light again turned on. If this scenario happens, it is called as saturation system. Now, again, red light is on. So again, can I say uh, the vehicle will start uh, making a queue? Right, same thing will happen. Queue. And now, departure curve looks something like this for this case. Okay, just think about it and tell me what happened here. Still, red light is not on but they both curve the both the curve are intersecting each other what does that mean think about it are you sure because this is the departure curve of the vehicle which were there in a queue still there is a green time remaining it is the opposite of what you are saying that all the vehicles standing in the queue they cross the section and even after the last vehicle crossed the intersection there is some green time left getting even after the last vehicle crossed the intersection of the queue the green time was there extra green time is available 
Now again red light, again accumulation of traffic and this time this is the curve. Now what this signifies, obviously you know what is it, right? So this is also saturation and this is unsaturated system. Okay, so why we are studying this? We are studying this to find out the average delay that the vehicle have to uh, face during this type of intersection or traffic light. So here all we need is this, this shaded region. This shaded region give us the total delay. The area of the shaded region give us the total delay. I'm not interested in total delay. I want average delay. No problem. This area divided by these number of vehicle will give us the average delay. Now there may be a question that uh, how to find out this area. So don't worry about that. They are not asking you these random areas in the exam. What they will ask you will look like this. So you may have to find out this shaded region. And I think you will be able to find it very easily if you know this value, you know this value, you know this value. So it is very easy to find out the shaded region. Is it clear or not Q and delay study? Uh, let's say it is 10, it is 60 seconds, it is 40 seconds. Can you tell me average delay? For example, how much it is going to be? Average delay value. Can you tell me everybody? Quick. Okay, so it will be half base into height minus half. I have to remove what this now. Base into height. This is total delay divided by 10. This is average delay, whatever it will come. I don't care. But this is the concept. Okay, 30. Perfect. It must be 30 then. Moving on. What do we have next? Okay. Next is the rotary. Rotary is uh, basically when uh, you want to provide anything which is self-regulatory, then you go for this option of rotary, right? IRC has recommended design speed as 40 kmph for rural roads and important roads, 30 kmph for urban areas and non-important areas. Coefficient of friction can be taken as 0.43 for speed of 40 kmph and 0.47 for speed of 30 kmph. Hardly they'll ask you this directly. They may ask you in numerical. Now, what is the advantage? Number of, number one is ordered traffic flow means there is no random flow which is happening on the intersection. Frequent stopping and starting of vehicle is avoided. So I hope you can understand where they are trying to indicate what they're trying to indicate. Traffic proceeds simultaneously and con uh, continue. Obviously, when there is no stopping starting, then traffic is continuous. Weaving movement replace the angular movement. All the angular movements now being replaced with the weaving movement. Turns have made easy and it is self-governing. 
खुद से चलता है यू डोंट नीड एनी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स और एनी थिंग इट इज सेल्फ गवर्निंग ओके ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट डिसएडवांटेज नंबर वन वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर राइट टेकिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टेक अ राइट यू जस्ट हैव टू यू नो रोड टेक अ राउंड अबाउट द एंटायर रोटरी रिक्वायर मोर लैंड ट्रैवल सम ट्रैवल ट्रबल सम इट इज नॉट इजी टू ट्रैवल ऑन दिस रोटरी रिक्वायर मैनी वॉर्निंग एंड डायरेक्शनल साइंस फॉर सेफ्टी डिफिकल्ट फॉर पेडेस्ट्रियन एंड डिफिकल्ट वेन इंटरसेक्शन एंगल इज टू एक्यूट If angle is too acute, then it become more challenging for the driver to use the rotary. Now here only uh, one thing you need to know uh, if we talk about uh, with respect to your exam, and that is these relationship. The entry radius is v square by one twenty seven f. I will write down in my handwriting. I know you will not forget this. R exit is one point five to two times of R entry. If they ask you what is the minimum exit radius and they give you the entry radius value, then just multiply one point five to it. If they ask you the maximum value, then multiply two to it. For Central Island, four by three of R entry. If not provided. then uh, weaving this width should be rotary width should be e1 should be equals to e2 all right e1 plus e2 by 2 we have to take as e if width of rotary not given take e plus 3.5 and if length of weaving section is not given take w into 4 so here why we are doing all these things so that we can finally find out the practical capacity that's what we are preparing for 280 w you know all these thing what is w what is e and everything p is nothing but it is a weaving traffic by total traffic that's how it works and it ranges from 0.4 to 1 they will give you the value of p you don't have to worry about that so this is how we find out the practical capacity all right so two chapters are done so yes obviously it can come in exam it's very common all right so how did your two chapters gone i mean how was it okay or not now we can start with the third chapter okay <clears throat> moving on uh so this is the all india open mock test schedule you can please attempt this now you have 127 gen i guess 13 gen also 13 gen to nikal gaya kya 13 to 19 acha okay that's why highway material now uh, in highway material what we have to do is we have to actually uh, design the mix in which we have coarse aggregate fine aggregate filler and the bitumen as a binder so we will have multiple method of designing like marshall stability we have uh, weem stabilometer stability test hubbard ya fir we can go for super pavement mix design method but as per our code we have to use only marshall stability test so what do we do in marshall stability test in marshall stability we have to prepare a core like this in india bituminous concrete mix is commonly designed by marshall method by this method resistance to plastic deformation of cylindrical specimen of bitumen mix is measured now <clears throat> what we do is here we make a core like this test specimen these are my test specimen been prepared and tested in the lab according to morth guidelines 
from the test result relationship between martial stability i'll tell you what is martial stability flow value bulk density air voids voids filled with bitumen with varying percentage of binder content for brickstone aggregate has been studied so what we are doing is we are basically preparing different different sample and in all those sample everything remains same except the binder which is bitumen so we will change the percentage of bitumen that we are using so the martial specimen we will prepare in which the, the one one of them will have the percentage bitumen as 4.5 percent other one will have five percent then 5.5 and then six so we have total four of them based on these four specimen we will find out uh martial stability for four of them flow value for four of them bulk density for four of them void for four of them and voids filled with bitumen for four of them that's what we'll do and we'll make a graph so here uh, with the help of this machine we will find out what martial stability and flow value now martial stability is what once you are done with the core you will put this core here and now you're going to apply the pressure here uh, how you are going to apply you are going to apply in such a way that the loading rate is 50.8 mm per minute that to at 60 degrees celsius and here as you can see we will also note how much vertical deflection is happening here right so the martial stability is the maximum load which will be sustained by bituminous material so after that load uh, if the load will be more the specimen will fail number one number two at that particular load means at maximum uh, load or at martial stability how much deflection happened in the specimen vertically that is flow value flow value refer to the vertical deformation when maximum load is reached so these two things i hope you got now uh, this is a specimen uh, so right now you are only looking at the aggregate if this is the phase diagram or volume diagram you can see majority of uh, here in this mix is nothing but aggregate right now this blue color are showing you voids in mineral aggregate now what is mineral aggregate mineral aggregate means mixture of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate you have coarse aggregate fine aggregate and filler also right in except binder everything is there now so if you have a mixture of coarse aggregate fine aggregate and filler and then you see how many voids are there inside that mix that are called as voids in mineral aggregate so right now that uh, blue part that you are seeing they are the voids in mineral aggregate means when i will add bitumen here can i say that bitumen will enter nowhere but in these voids only and some voids will be left with nothing but air at the end yes or no did you get this or not that these voids in mineral aggregate are going to be filled by air and bitumen got it all right next uh this shows you the binder like total binder now as you can see this was vma and out of this vma this much is bitumen so what is this what is this blank space this is air void all right so this is the phase diagram coarse aggregate fine aggregate filler bitumen and voids now here there is something which is called as theoretical specific gravity that we have to find now why we call it theoretical because we consider there is no voids in this mixture right and it is not practical that there is no void in the mixture that is why we consider it as a theoretical specific gravity so it is w1 by g1 w2 by g2 w3 by g3 and wb by gb here w is the weight of all these aggregate in percentage and g are the 
स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी ऑफ दोज मटीरियल ऑल राइट सो आई एम थिंकिंग टू टेक फिफ्टीन मिनट्स ब्रेक इफ इट इज ओके विद यू बिकॉज आफ्टर दैट आई फिनिश द होल थिंग एक पंद्रह मिनट का ब्रेक लेते हैं बिकॉज आफ्टर दैट हार्डली वन आवर आई विल बी नीडिंग ओके ओके जस्ट फिफ्टीन मिनट्स ब्रेक आई विल कम बैक
Ayo. Huh. All right. So let's finish now, okay? <clears throat> Everyone is here? Alright. Uh, next thing is uh, to find out the mass specific gravity or you can say the actual specific gravity. What we can do is we can just take the specimen and uh, weight, have the weight of it and then put the specimen in the water and again weight how much is the weight of the specimen under the water okay so ww is let's say w m is weight of mix in air and ww is weight of mix in water so gm will be wm upon wm minus w w this is a very common practice to find out the specific gravity of the mixture next to find out the void ratio uh, again uh, percentage voids sorry percentage voids so volume of voids uh, are very simple volume of voids divided by the total volume gives you the percentage but in terms of bulk specific gravity and apparent uh, specific gravity means theoretical specific gravity and gm how to find out percentage vv it is gt minus gm by gt into 100 very simple percentage voids in mineral aggregate i have already told you that vma is nothing but it is the space where either the air voids are there or the bitumen will be there now out of total okay available uh, voids how much voids are having the bitumen so voids filled with bitumen that can be found out as voids having bitumen divided by vma so this is how we find out now <clears throat> based on all these things we have actually got these graph let me show you the graph this is the graph of martial stability by bitumen flow value versus bitumen unit weight bitumen vv bitumen and <coughs> VV okay this has to be VV uh, this has to be VFB as bitumen increasing okay let me just say one by one okay the so first one is Marshall number uh, versus bitumen so as the percentage of bitumen increases the maximum load carrying capacity it was increasing but after a certain point it starts to decrease. So, this is how the variation takes place. For flow value, as the bitumen increase, the flow value also increase, means the total vertical deformation also increase under maximum load. Unit weight is same, first increase, then decrease. Now, percentage volume of voids, obviously, as the bitumen as the bitumen will increase what will happen the air voids or the voids in which we are having the air now it will be filled with what bitumen so the voids having air is decreasing next this graph is wrong it has to be like this because when the bitumen is increasing so obviously the voids in which bitumen is there it should also increase now why we did this thing so that we can find out the percentage bitumen corresponding to maximum martial stability let's say this is b1 corresponding to maximum unit weight let's say this percentage of bitumen is b2 and also bitumen corresponding to four percent of volume of voids let's say this is b3 so based on this, I am going to find out optimum binder content as B1 plus B2 plus B3 divided by 3. This is optimum binder content and this actually is the value of bitumen that I should have in the mixture for the design purpose. Is it clear to all of you why we did all these things? I hope it is clear.
doubts clear then write cc please okay next okay the pavement design this is the last chapter now requirement of a highway pavement basically we are talking about like what are the things that we expect from a good pavement right number one we should have a smooth surface so that we have a comfort uh, for the road user <laughs> sufficient thickness of distribution of wheel load stress to save uh, value on the subgrade soil so distribution should be even Adequate coefficient of friction to prevent skidding. Impervious surface so that subgrade soil is well protected. Long design life with low maintenance, right? Now, if I talk about the flexible pavement, what is the advantages? Number one, lesser initial cost compared to the rigid pavement. Very easy to repair. Additional thickness can be added at any time. Whenever you want, you can just increase the thickness of the pavement. Non-skilled property do not deteriorate. So with the time, you will never see that a bitumen road is becoming smoother. It can tolerate great range of temperature as temperature stress won't develop in this case. So there is no temperature stress problem. So it doesn't matter what the temperature is. It will work. Now, what is the disadvantage? Disadvantage is they may lose some flexibility and cohesion with time. Higher maintenance cost. Very frequently they need maintenance. Chances of distresses are more compared to rigid pavement. Means failure. Number of failure are more here in comparison to the rigid pavement. Moving on to the advantage of rigid pavement. Number one, very durable means longer design life it is having. Longer service life, higher resistance to water attack, and very low maintenance. Now, disadvantage higher initial cost. If you compare this with the flexible pavement, which is built with bitumen surface, then it is going to be very much expensive. This cement concrete road requires frequent maintenance at joint. Affected by temperature variation. Why? Because stresses are very likely to generate. I'll talk about them as well. So here, if you want to find out the stresses at any depth Z. So what you can do is you can use the Bosigner's theory. Bosigner's theory says that stress at any depth Z is equals to P 1 minus Z cube divided by A square plus Z square power 3 by 2. Here P is the surface pressure. which is nothing but wheel load by contact area a is the radius of contact area and z is the depth at which you want to find out the pressure next is rigidity factor which is the ratio of contact pressure and tire pressure now what is the contact pressure what is tire pressure so tire pressure is same thing only uh, like uh, when you go for uh, whenever there is a less uh, pressure in your tire you have to go to the shop and then you have to check uh, before that person that puncher wala guy hawa wala jo hota hai wo pehle check karta hai like how much pressure is there in the tire for example uh, like maybe 35, 30 unit or 33 unit PSI, whatever unit uh, your tire is having the capacity of accordingly you go for it. So how much pressure is there inside the tire? That is the tire pressure. Contact pressure is basically how much reaction this tire is getting from the ground that is basically called as the contact pressure. So contact pressure by tire pressure is your rigidity factor for design purpose. Contact pressure and tire pressure are considered as 7 kgs per centimeter square and 7 kgs per centimeter square 
so that rigidity factor comes out to be 1. And if obviously contact pressure is more, tire pressure is less, rigidity factor will be more and vice versa. Next is equivalent single wheel load. Now suppose if you are having this type of uh, uh, assembly with you, right, in which you have dual wheel. In which you have dual wheel. Now, instead of dual wheel, if you want a single wheel giving you the same effect of load and stress and everything, then what should be the load of that one tire? Okay, that load is called as equivalent single wheel load. Now here, remember that from depth 0 to D by 2, equivalent single wheel load will be equals to P only, whatever the load you are having. Depth greater than 2S, it will be 2P, equivalent single wheel load. Depth which is greater than d by 2 less than 2s, it will be greater than p but less than 2p. Now, how to find this? You can find this with the help of interpolation method. Interpolation say you can do right. So, log base 10 2p minus log base 10p by log base 10 2s log base 10 d by 2 is equals to log base 10 whatever depth you whatever uh, pressure you want to find out let's say p dash log base 10p now at this depth which is greater than uh, uh, greater than d by 2, smaller than 2 is, let's say z depth. This is how you can find out. Got it? Any doubt? Quickly answer. Next is repetition of load. That's nothing to explain. Yeah, it is important vehicle damage factor. Now here what you are doing is you are basically checking all uh, the load that you are having. Like how much is the damaging effect this particular load can give. For this, this basically follows the fourth power law. So that load divided by the standard Excel load raised to the power 4. This gives you the value. Now there is a possibility that uh, they may also give you the frequency. Right, that uh, let's say this is the example that uh, maybe 0 to 40 kilonewton of load, 60 vehicle have 0 to 40 kilonewton of the XL load, 80 vehicle is having 40 to 80 like that. Okay, how to deal with this? First, find out the you know a load, how much will be the average? This is 20, right? This is 60, like that. Now that particular Excel load 20 by whatever is the standard load you are considering 80 and frequency frequency is 60 here similarly 80 divided by 80 into sorry 60 divided by 80 into 80 frequency divided by total frequency so even if the frequency is given the question is still very simple the next thing is uh, the design design can be done with the help of group index California uh, California resistance, triaxial, Burmester, right? Now here for our uh, gate perspective, we don't have to be, you know, uh, talking about the design process, the entire design process. We can talk about, you know, uh, the parts from where directly the question will be asked. So like this, this is group index method. You must have seen this in your soil mechanics also. So the group index formula is 0 0.2 A plus 0 0.01 B D plus 0 0.005 A C. Now here what is A B C D? A is P minus 35 where P is percentage finer than 75 micron and it should not be greater than 40. If it is then you have to consider it as 40 only. B is P minus 15 should not be greater than 40. If it is greater than 40 consider 40. C is liquid limit minus 40 should not be greater than 20. If it is greater than 20, consider 20 as the value of C. And uh, IP, 
which is plastic index WL minus WP minus 10, it should again not be greater than 20. Uh, now, if you want to see the classification, so 0 to 1, 2 to 4, 5 to 9, and 10 to 20, these are the values, good soil, fair soil, poor soil, very poor soil. So, this is the classification, greater is the GI value. Poorer is the soil. Okay. And if I ask you greater is the GI value. Dash is the thickness of pavement. Greater or lesser. Greater is the GI value. Dash is the thickness of pavement or subgrade, greater or less. Can it come negative also? So, yes, greater is the GI value, poor is the soil, means less strength, means thickness should be more. Next is California ratio method, bearing method. Here we consider the load, load taken by the sample at 2.5 and 5 mm penetration divided by the standard load. What we do is we find out CBR 2.5 and CBR 5. This is P1 by 1370 into 100 or pressure if you want to write then it is p1 into step uh, divided by 70 into 100 cbr5 will be p2 2055 into 100 and if you talk about this it is how much 110 into 100 105 sorry 105. Now, out of these, what we will do is, we will go for the maximum. Okay. If, see, uh, CBR 2.5 should be max. But if CBR 5 is max, then repeat the test. And if after repetition, again, CBR 5 is max, then consider CBR5 only for the design. What design? To find out the thickness of the pavement. How to find out thickness? So 1.75 P by CBR minus A square. Now remember when you uh, use this thickness formula, what you are getting actually. So you are having a layer like these. So suppose you are using this, uh, you know, you have, uh, you have used the CBR value for this layer subgrade right so the thickness value that you will get this is not the thickness of subgrade no this is the thickness of the pavement which is above this layer if you use this material cbr value and put it here you will get this thickness so just remember this i think you know this already if you don't now you know okay next is what next is modified cbr where we need to find out cumulative Excel. So, million standard Excel. That's what we are going to find out. Okay. So, here what we are going to do is we need to just find out the value of million standard Excel. But, uh, so this is direct formula. There is nothing that I have to tell you. This is a formula only. Right. If uh, like everything is given. No concept. All right. Next comes up uh, the rigid pavement modulus of subgrade reaction so modulus of subgrade reaction basically gives the measurement of resistance of soil so it gives the strength of soil in terms of deformation basically how much resistant it is towards the deformation so it is p by delta p is the pressure again wheel pressure divided by delta delta is standard deflection considered as 0.125 centimeter or 1.25 mm also you can take next 
नेक्स्ट इज रेडियस ऑफ रिलेटिव स्टिफनेस ई एच क्यू बाई ट्वेल्व के वन माइनस म्यू स्क्वायर रिस्टिव पावर वन बाई फोर प्लीज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिमेंबर दिस नथिंग टू एक्सप्लेन अगेन इक्विलेंट रेडियस ऑफ रोजिस्टिंग सेक्शन हाउ मच एरिया इज अफेक्टेड अराउंड द कॉन्टैक्ट एरिया सो द रेडियस ऑफ दैट अफेक्टेड एरिया इज बेसिकली इक्विलेंट रेडियस ऑफ रोजिस्टिंग सेक्शन सो हियर इफ ए इज लेस देन वन पॉइंट सेवन टू फोर एच वेयर ए इज रेडियस ऑफ द कॉन्टैक्ट एरिया एंड एच इज द थिकनेस ऑफ द पेवमेंट देन वी यूज दिस फॉर्मूला अदरवाइज वी गो फॉर बी इज इक्वल्स टू ए डायरेक्टली ओके बर्मिस्टर मेथड देर आर टू थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू नो फॉर फ्लेक्सीबल प्लेट फॉर रिजिड प्लेट बेसिकली ओके सो फॉर दिस इज समथिंग दैट इज गोइंग टू बी आज डिरेक्टली देर विल बी यू नो दे विल नॉट आस्क यू टू जस्ट दे विल नॉट आस्क यू टू डायरेक्टली यू नो टू हैव अ डिजाइन डिजाइन नहीं कराएगा आपको गेट में इन इंजीनियरिंग सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन इट इज वेरी इजी लाइक दे कैन आस्क यू द डिजाइन ऑल्सो now for flexible plate or wheel load test also known as wheel load test delta is 1.5 pa by es into f2 f2 is a deflection factor and its value actually depends upon a graph uh, a by h and that is a graph that you may need but obviously in gate examination not required not given f2 just take a one for rigid plate or प्लेट लोड टेस्ट यू कैन यूज वन पॉइंट वन एट फैक्टर हेयर यू यूज वन पॉइंट फाइव फैक्टर राइट दैट्स द डिफरेंस नाउ दर इज समथिंग विच इज देर इन रिजिड पेमेंट बट नॉट इन फ्लेक्सीबल पेमेंट एंड दे आर द स्ट्रेसिस वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द स्ट्रेसिस देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रेसिस विच कम वन इज द व्हील लोड एंड अदर इज द टेम्परेचर वेर आर टॉक अबाउट द टेम्परेचर स्ट्रेस टेम्परेचर स्ट्रेस कम वेन द टेम्परेचर चेंजेस so the change in temperature can be seen two ways one on the daily basis second on seasonal basis so whatever stresses are coming because of the daily variation those are called as warping stress and due to seasonal called as frictional variation so we need to understand what is the nature of these stresses first if i talk about wheel load stress so if the load is there in interior then the deflection can be seen like this so as you can see there is a compression at top and tension at bottom if it is on edge then same compression at top tension at bottom and if it is at corner then opposite will happen tension on top compression at bottom so this is uh, mentioned here also compression top compression top uh, compression tension compression top tension bottom compression top tension bottom but in corner opposite tension on top and compression at bottom now let's talk about the warping stresses comes because of day and night variation so when there is a day time in day time what happen the slab top surface is hotter so the slab wants to deform like this but obviously it has a very high resistance toward deformation so it won't be able to deform itself like this and the reason is because of the internal stresses which are generated now because the internal stresses have to make sure that the shape of this particular slab remains the same so it has to generate opposite and equal uh, stresses right so here obviously what the hap what will happen is on top you will see tension sorry you will see compression and at bottom you will see tension in day time and in uh, night time opposite so yeah day time compression on top tension bottom compression tension compression tension and opposite at night also now in summer what happen is the slab wants to expand like anything but it will remain in its original shape how because internal compression stresses will be generated which will keep the slab in its original shape that's why compression all the time and tension all the time in winter next is the joints joints can be classified into two categories longitudinal joints and lateral joints longitudinal joint basically 
हेल्प अस टू डेवलप द श्रिंकेज क्रैक्स राइट एंड देर इज वन लेटरल ज्वाइंट ऑल्सो विच डू द सेम जॉब एंड इट इज योर कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ज्वाइंट टू कीप द ज्वाइंट आई मीन टू मेंटेन द गैप ऑफ द ज्वाइंट वी हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट वी आर यूजिंग अ टाई बार टाई बार विल नेवर ट्रांसफर द लोड इट इज ओनली डिजाइन टू विद स्टैंड द टेंसाइल फोर्सेस मूविंग ऑन नाउ ट्रांसफर्स ज्वाइंट वी हैव एक्सपेंशन ज्वाइंट नाउ एक्सपेंशन ज्वाइंट it is a full depth joint and longitudinal joint is also a full depth joint only contraction joint are groove they are not full full length joint right full depth joint i mean contraction so it is not a full depth joint it is groove so groove is this like this this depth is 25 to 30% of total depth and this thickness will be Uh, should uh, sh width should not be less than three mm. Should not be less than three mm. The last one is the construction joint. So construction joint comes just because of stopping and starting the work next day. So we want to avoid this. So what we do is we end the work for the day when we end the work of the day. wherever we have to provide expansion joint so my expansion joint automatically become construction joint or you can say the construction joint automatically becomes the expansion joint so this way we can avoid the construction joint and that is it from my side so this was highway engineering and i have told you each and everything which was uh, required to be taught for gate preparation rest If you need anything, just please leave the comment bo uh, comment below this video. I hope you enjoyed the session, and now we'll see you in the next class whenever uh, we'll plan for the practice session. Till then, take care of yourself. Please take care of your family as well. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks. Thank you so much.